Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to a, a podcast, podcast will save, save this relationship. relationship. I'm Josh. He, him. I'm Sarah. See, she, her. On today's <laughs> podcast, we talked about gibberish. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It was just a whole podcast of gibberish. We also talked about our anniversary. <laughs> we did. That devolved into porn and Yeah, we did sex. talk about porn and sex a lot. We're yeah. two very sexual people. Yeah, we very much are. And that's what we learned today that, on the we show. We did learn that today on we the show. We started a new fan fiction that we we're not going to say the name of. But it is in the description, so it's already spoiled. But yeah, start a new fan fiction, and then we did our Reddit stories like usual. Yeah. Uh, So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell, raise five stars on Apple and Spotify podcast if that's where you're listening. Uh Uh-huh. And check out our Patreon, buy me coffee at those sites forward slash ABWSTR. If you want to skip right to the red segment, timestamps are down below. That's true. And enjoy the fucking show, dude. (laughs) Check out ABWSTR Gaming as well. Bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. We gotta bring the podcast in. We gotta bring podcast in. Yeah, guys, you can't leave the podcast out. You gotta gotta bring bring it it in. in. Yeah, this is our this is our TEDx talk. It's not over. It's not under. It's not to the side. You gotta bring it in. in. Yeah, yeah. That would be the quality. I think if like TEDx ever had like a Orlando based (laughs) like thing, that would be the quality. They have a Miami one. Yeah, I think they might have. Yeah, but if they had one just for Orlando, that would be the quality. I think they just ask us to come over and we just. Yeah, you have to bed. bring the podcast in. And repeat that ad nauseum <laughs> for 10 minutes. Yeah. And I think we'd get a standing O. I think we could. I think we might get a standing O. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How you doing, sir? We could at least stack the brakes. You we know what say, I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Stacking them brakes. You got to bring the podcast in and you got to stack the brakes. You got to stack brakes <laughs> and get that standing O. And get that standing O. Yeah. <laughs> KPIs, <laughs> SEO. <laughs> RPM. RPM. CPM. M- yeah. If you're not on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude. All right. How, how okay. you doing, Sarah? Happy doing anniversary. Good. Happy anniversary. This is like, technically, this is our anniversary episode. Yeah, kind of. Because it's going out. We're recording this on the day we met. Yes. Five years ago. And then when it comes out, we'll be, be the, the day, anniversary. The actual anniversary. Yeah. So while this is digitally out in the air, yeah. uh, we'll be getting getting mad crunk at mad crunk. City Walk. Maybe. Who knows? If we have money. If we have money by the end of yeah. Yeah. Rent coming out mm. and all this other fucking bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. How you feeling? How you doing? I'm chilling. Nice. I'm good. I, I feel like this year is going to be a little bit of a low key anniversary for us. Yeah. Which I'm excited to start. I'm doing. okay with that. Yeah. Because I, I think, yeah, we usually do like, I, we did a vacation already this year for your birthday, and I think that's enough. Yeah. That's think, like, yeah. We used to do like a lot of vacationing for our anniversary. Yeah. And it was. You know, we were also in a very privileged position of like you had a job and vacation rentals, yeah. and that was like the only reason why. Yeah, it was literally the only reason. Yeah, and yeah. now that that's gone, and we have to support ourselves. It's when not it comes happening. To vacation. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's never. And I do talk like I. I think I talked about it on those books, Zarathustra on Patreon dot com forward slash apwsdr. Um, it, it, it's the feeling of like when you have a vacation every year, mm. when you don't have that privilege anymore. It kind of is like. You know, it's a little bit like, fuck. Oh, like... How do I do... What do I do? I get you, yeah. <laughs> How do I do this from you home? Gotta fill, you gotta fill in that void, I guess, of like a little celebratory... Yeah, like yeah. S- starting out big, and the next year you kind of feel like you have to go bigger. Yeah, and then now it's like, small. <laughs> small. <laughs> big to small. But I'm excited for it. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I had a lot of anxiety in the beginning of our relationship. Because mm. it was like the first relationship for both of us. Yeah. So I think I wanted it to be like the best, <laughs> the best ever. And um, no, yeah. So it's like you felt like you had to keep one upping yourself. Yeah, and I feel like now I'm like it's there's there's it's nice to just be able to chill. Yeah, out. I agree with that too. Yeah, I was yeah. settling down, settling the stallion. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, fuck it. I feel that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it'll be a good anniversary. I think. Yeah, I think it'll be nice and chill. And honestly, I'm fine with that because we've. Same. I think we've also, I think now with how our, what our job is, which is this, I mm-hmm. don't feel a need anymore of like, I need to get the fuck out of Orlando. Yeah, same. Like, I'm like, I'm not even a part of Orlando. This is like a little like sub colony of Orlando, <laughs> you know, that's like, I don't need to go outside. Yeah, this yeah. is the Chinlando here in 
uh, uh, country. <laughs> yeah, nation state. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. We we yeah. only follow we we just you know a subsidiary of Orlando. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I think it'll be good. I, I'm happy that we've we've been ke- we've kept it going for five years. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. Now's the time where people maybe will start thinking that we've been together a long time. Yeah, like yeah, and maybe it's a little more serious than it is. <laughs> then yeah, not some even that it is. Then some, like, and, then, then some people will like uh, uh, mm. think it is. You know what I mean? How do you think it's changed your perspective of other people in relationships? Um, I don't. Has it? I mean, I I don't know. What do you mean by that? Like just like like before you got into a relationship, what what did you think it would be like? Uh, <laughs> I. I you know, it's a hard question to ask because I genuinely can't remember what I thought a relation. Mm. I guess it was just like you have a, a, a you have a, a girlfriend. You have a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. But I guess I never understood the ramifications of yeah. having a, a partner. I guess. Mm. I don't know. Did you have any thoughts of like what a relationship would be like? Oh my god, I thought it was going to be hell. <laughs> What? I've had and the opposite. I, I thought, oh, that would be awesome, dude. Oh, Hell really? Yeah. That's thought, so cute. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was always constantly like, it's terrible. <laughs> Fucking sucks. Like, it's like you're stupid in the beginning when you love someone. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what she fucking said. Like, I'm sorry, mom, if you're fucking watching, you freak. Like you, yeah. <laughs> this really, is what you got you drilled into. I'm sorry. That's really like yeah. It was like you know I grew up being like I don't like you know fuck boys. Boys are <laughs> mean. Ew, um, that's ridiculous. Because my mom was like I hate men, and she genuinely did, and she had reason to. Yeah, she had you know she went through some pretty fucked up situations in her life that made her like be suspicious of men mm-hmm. and be like an actual like misandrist kind of yeah and um it, which i think is so funny when people call me a misandrist because i'm like you don't know uh, half of it <laughs> you don't know yeah, even you know, a you don't little know how bit. bad it could have been yeah like and it was a, it was detrimental because i thought like getting married was hell mm. getting into a relationship was dumb and like basically like i would get into a relationship and then i would have to deal with a man being shitty and abusive to me Mm. And then I, we would get married, and I would be trapped. And eventually, I would be single, like my mom. Shit. Okay. Yeah, I get what you mean. That's- she was really just like, "That's going to happen to you." <laughs> and I was like, "That's never gonna happen to me." And then she'd be like, "No, because when you start liking someone, you're stupid, and you'll do whatever they want because you like them, and you want to do whatever the fuck ever." And she was very like, "Don't do that." No. Like, yeah. Do they have boundaries and shit? Oh, for sure. Yeah. But it was definitely like the opposite too far the opposite way yeah of like yeah i get what you mean yeah it's a lot of hard work and i mean i cannot describe this shit is so fucking easy it's real easy (laughs) yeah i mean it's not even i guess it's a lot of work in the sense of like i I don't even know how i could describe the work aspect quote unquote just normal shit just normal yeah like chores yeah (laughs) yeah chores that you would normally have to do if you lived by yourself yeah but now you got another person. Yeah, to help, help. out. Yeah, the, pay the right. Got a roommate. It's actually better. It's, it is better. <laughs> it yeah. is better. And I feel really bad because I have friends that are single and shit, and they're also like that. They're like, I'm just in my single era. I'm taking care of myself. I'm not getting into a relationship because that's too complicated. And I keep going like, y- you do that. You definitely. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Great idea. No, I mean, like, I'm trying to be good at it, but I'm like, if I wasn't in a relationship right now, I would be a sham of a person. I would be very upset. (laughs) Yeah, I get you. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's fucking awesome. And I don't want to say that because I feel like it's mean. It's mean, yeah, the single people, yeah, that, you know, like, yeah, do your old thing, be single, whatever. Yeah. However, it's pretty fucking epic. When, you're, when you find it's the right fucking, person. It's you, the you, best. You gotta wrap them up, baby. I fucking. can't describe how awesome it is. I'm sorry. It's, no, I it's totally get amazing. what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome being in a relationship. Yeah. It's really good. I feel like, yeah, and I feel like, you know, I think with how long our relationship's gone, it's, so, it's a lot better to, like, I don't know, I feel like if I had, uh, had dated in high school, it would not nearly be as good as this. Same. Same. Yeah, I've I think never that, met another person that I connect with so easily. Yeah. I totally agree with that, yeah. Yeah. Damn. 
I don't know. I'm happy that you know, fucking we've we've done five years. Yeah, we're gonna do maybe another five. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows, dude? Eh. I, do you I, think we should have like one of those like Marvel like fucking like <laughs> roadmaps of like question mark like if I can who knows what will happen next the next era of Josh and Sarah's relationship <laughs> God what a bunch I don't of know. yeah I can't imagine what would ha- like what would happen actually mm. I can't like we it, it's possible that we could just like grow apart or something mm. platonically No yeah I think it's fair I think that's a very like I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening either, but it's also like, I'm not blind and stupid. You know what I mean? Of like, that's I'm, the thing. Yeah. Like I, I know very realistically anything could happen. Yeah. And I'm not going to be super surprised, but I think there's ways around like the, like the stereotypical, like fucking like angry, shitty breakup that just completely ruins. That's the thing. I don't even know how that would even happen. Yeah. In this relationship. Unless like you've just been cheating on me for 20 years. <laughs> Like since I was since I was four years yeah, old. Yeah, since you were four years old. Like I'm getting mad bitches in kindergarten, dude. Yeah, <laughs> mad bitches. Like you know, I don't know. Unless it's just some big fucking secret. Yeah, like a like a like a secret that like would take so much fucking work. Yeah. And so much like Yeah, like just a lot of I think of, you'd be more upset at the idea of like, why weren't you working on the fucking podcast? I, would, of, I don't even think I'd be upset. I'd just be like astounded. I'd be like, how did you do that? I saw you every day. Yeah. Like like when? When yeah, you were <laughs> like how and when like I don't even know how you could keep a separate phone. Yeah, like it, I feel like that would be a very difficult thing to do. I've never understood the two phones thing. One's for your bitches and one's for your girlfriend. Well, I mean, yeah, but like Yeah. How the f- why do you it's, that shit's tracked. <laughs> well, gonna, I mean, CIA I know. knows everything, dude. Fucking <laughs> Yeah, but your girlfriend doesn't. She'll know. She'll, fi- she'll I mean, figure. She'll it figure it out. out. Yeah. yeah, it's not like a. Because also, like, what is it? We have like what a one thousand square foot apartment. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Where the fuck would I hide it? Where? That wouldn't require a lot of work of moving things around. Of like, <laughs> and then just having that guilt. Also, like, I know you. Like, you don't the lie would be very bad. well. Yeah, it would be like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be really funny, like hiding a second phone in like the closet in the other room, but it would require, like a drawer, or something. like moving all the like boxes in front of that closet we never use. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying like you know, I there are a lot of women out there who you know have been cheated on. They didn't know. I'm not saying they're stupid or anything. No, I get you. Yeah, no. I don't want to imply that either. No, 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 no. It's I on think the owners of the just... man cheating. They're the asshole. Yeah. Yeah, I just think in our in the context of our relationship. We see each other and work with each other every day. Pretty much, yeah. I think we're in each other's eyesight, like, yeah, eighty percent of the time. Yeah, and I'm not saying that also you can't be cheated on in that situation either. But it just it would be weird. It would be weird. It would be yeah. I'd be like, I don't how? know how, to, how else to describe it. Just your vibe is not a cheater. <laughs> No. Which I, I do appreciate that because I definitely like uh God, I have a very weird relationship with like I guess cheating, I guess. Oh, like, really? I've never cheated. No. Because I've never been in a relationship up until this point. But Same, like yeah. I've been used like before I like I've helped other people cheat. That's true, yeah. Like with two other people at least. And then like I've lost a friendship uh mm. and a film partner and I've talked about that a little bit yeah. because he was used he, to cheat with someone else. Yeah. And that was like Wow, you know, that was a very hard fucking moment in my life. Yeah, yeah. Which I also think shows how good my life is, because if that's the hardest moment, <laughs> for the most part, I've been doing pretty fine. Yeah, that guy was a weirdo. That guy was a little fucking freak. He was a weird yeah. guy. I don't know, I think I'm just happy that, like, I, I don't know, I feel like I've always worried before, I think, maybe about the communicative aspects. Mm-hmm. I think what really fucked me up in high school and I think going into a little bit of college was I always felt like no one understood me. Yeah. And I think now there's a little bit more of an understanding mm. like between us. And I think we can actually talk things out. Mm. I don't know. I think it's a good thing. I think, I this, think, is, yeah. and I think this relationship has also grown us into better people that Absolutely. coincidentally can still stay together. Like we haven't grown apart. We've grown stronger together. Yeah. And been, been like a little power couple, you know? Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of people say, like, it's a red flag to... Because we met, and then we were official four days later. Yeah. Three days later, actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. people say that shit is a red flag. And it's like, all oh, love bombing. Because then you said... The, uh, we said, 
we loved each other like two weeks after. Three weeks in, yeah. Yeah, two weeks. It was two weeks It was in? two weeks. I have it on my calendar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Red flag, you're <laughs> keeping track of every single thing, <laughs> and I'm not, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I have the notification of, like, Met Sarah, our anniversary. Uh, well, I also have it set up to where it's only 30 minutes before the day, so it's a really bad time to get a last-minute gift. <laughs> oh, fuck, so tomorrow's the anniversary oh, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to CBS. <laughs> That's close. really funny. Fuck. fuck. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh man, I don't know. I think it's it's interesting because we definitely have both grown into better people. I think this podcast also has helped us grow. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like this podcast lot. is our our child. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think on some level, I mean, it has saved quote unquote the relationship at some point because forcing yourself to sit down and, and talk, talk for three hours at least once a week with your partner. Yeah, some people don't fucking ever do that. Talk. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah, I guess some people, yeah, I guess, like, I wonder, I, I don't, I don't know how much we talk throughout the week, and I don't know how much other people talk, like, hours-wise. And we've definitely gone through phases where we're mostly just, like, especially living together, sometimes we'll just be cohabitating, you know? Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think definitely it's, it's it was more situations where we're both stressed, and we both have, like, significant things going on in our life. Yeah, and, like, I don't know, I feel like, it, it, that was another thing, too, when we were both working, uh, like before this became our job, even when I was working at home, yeah. like even that, it was like we can't really talk as much. Yeah, you know, I, I have to have my brain power for every, every once every six minutes. Yeah, so it didn't, never led to like really long conversations that we're now, I guess, known for. I don't know, but like, yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's also you had ADHD that was not diagnosed. Yeah, that wasn't diagnosed and wasn't being treated. Yeah. And I wasn't like like the only self medicating that I was doing inadvertently was the gym, but like that yeah didn't help out nearly enough, and I wasn't doing it nearly enough to like yeah, and yeah. It, it wasn't like a couple's activity because I wasn't going to the gym as much either. Yeah, so it was so like, it it was very like um isolating feeling sometimes, but once we figured that out, it was it's like yeah, yeah you know now we know yeah. So what's your what's your relationship advice? Um, for all the for all the youngins out there, I mean, I guess figure out what kind of a relationship you want. You know what your boundaries are and what you would like to feel in a relationship. Like the whole idea of love languages, even though it's kind of been defunct now, not it's not a real thing. Yeah, but it's an interesting like way. You of, have to look into yourself and say, what do I want to deal with? What do I not want to deal with? Yeah, what can I deal with? How do I want my partner to make to help me feel? Yeah. How much of that is me thinking about my own insecurities and my own shit mm. and how much of it is they're telling like, you know, if I'm think oh, I'm a fat fuck, it's not because you were telling me I'm a fat fuck because you don't you don't that'd say be great. that. Yeah, that would be wild. Like five years and be like, Sarah, we got to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would, that's what I'm saying. After, that would especially, so like especially a- after like purposefully <laughs> editing TikToks being like. You know, like, very much, like, having a very public, very fucking, like... Yeah, which now I have to I'm make... Like pro... Yeah, you have to make... I'm, I'm, I'm fat, fat and I hate and men I merch. Hate men mer- merch yeah. really bad. Which I, I think we're also trying to find a new... <laughs> I think another thing, too, is running a business with your partner. It really requires you to either break up or, like, come together. Yeah, exactly. There's no... There's no... You can't have like a middling relationship. Yeah, with you can't the have other an person. awesome like rom- romantic relationship, and, uh, ro- and then have a <laughs> shitty business partnership. I can't fucking believe you forgot to fucking post the TikTok, Josh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's not the communication skills transfer too. But there yeah. are times where I've had to be like, okay, I'm not your partner right now. I'm your business partner. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And there have been times where I'm like, I'm not being a business partner with you. This is just me as yeah, your girlfriend. So you gotta separate every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, because and I think that's healthy too. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of things that people say are red flags that just it's. I don't want to feel like I, you're being a little picky. <laughs> do you? Because <laughs> uh, I know yeah. I know how we feel. Uh, I know how some people feel about this, and I this I feel like bringing this up is controversial. But like porn, I I know you're very. Oh my god, I was reading some shit about that today. Real okay. I'm very open about porn, and I think in the beginning of our relationship, I was actually insecure about it, but I was trying to be the cool girl. Mm. And now I'm okay with it because it wasn't really a problem with, because I watched porn 
and I'm a person who watches porn, and yeah. you are also a, per- a person who watched porn, mm. and you also talk about porn a lot in the beginning of our I relationship. Did. Yeah, that was yeah, that, that, that was been just a you were being a 19 year old man. Yeah, though, just fucking <laughs> well, you got hormones just it. going out yeah. and about. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it could have been a problem if I was not a porn person. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, but I was trying to deal with the dichotomy of like, how can I tell him I'm not comfortable with him watching porn? When I'm comfortable with myself watching porn. Yeah. That doesn't seem fair, right? Yeah. I know it's different for everyone, but like, I know that for us. And I think it's totally valid to be like, no porn watching. I think if that's something that is really hurtful to you and you feel like it's cheating, you know, everybody has a different boundary, you Mm. know, for cheating. There's some people that they think it's fine for their partner to go into a club and kiss someone else and they don't think that's cheating. That's a... (sighs) And that's valid too. I mean, that's valid. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I, I would be upset. <laughs> <laughs> be very upset. But I, it's so funny to me because everyone has a different uh, perspective experience. Yeah. Mine was I was jealous of the girls that you were looking at because I was attracted to those mm. girls as well. And I was not comfortable with expressing my attraction to... until I was. And all of a sudden I didn't give a shit. Yeah. It's Yeah. Yeah. I feel that, yeah, it's it's like, I guess, like, what's the deeper layer, I guess, of understanding, you know, of like, mm-hmm. what what are the things that have happened to you that cause you to think certain ways, and if those things change, how does that change? Yeah. I, I've run myself into a pretzel here, but, like, no, fucking, yeah. yeah, yeah, but, like, uh, yeah, uh, I guess, you know what I mean, yeah, like yeah, the, exactly, I feel that. You know, I was reading a post, actually, recently, where this lady, she was on her husband's phone, Mm. And um, she was scrolling through Instagram reels and it was all just women with huge tits doing dances. I will say the... (laughs) (laughs) And she got really... She was like, I am going to leave my husband. Wow, okay. Because she had previously told him to delete TikTok because he was doing that on TikTok. Oh, but then he he moved over to Instagram. And she... Her problem with it was the big titty women. It wasn't that he lied to her. It was that she's a small framed woman and doesn't have big tits. Oh, okay. And he likes the big titty women. And I think it's a little bit like, I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't be upset at you for liking porn that doesn't have exactly my body shape in it. Mm. You know? I get what you mean, yeah. Like, you can be, I think generally you can, people can be attracted to multiple people at once. Yeah. And it's not really a big deal. Loyalty is more like just I choose that person. I, yeah, th- yeah. I don't need to be the most attractive person that you've ever seen cuz I'm not Angelina Jolie or Megan <laughs> Fox. I know it. I will never be her. And, I'm and not, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Which which men do you like? Which I don't know anymore, man. Which men's do you, Ryan It's honestly just you. Ryan Gosling. I think it's just you straight up. Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> That's similar enough, I guess. That's similar enough. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Henry, Ka- uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah, Jason Momoa. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm not the buff man. <laughs> um, Henry Cavill, you like? Henry too. Cavill, you've, I do you've, like you've, Henry Cavill. Yeah, he's you've, a sweet little man. Anytime you've uh, there's been a movie of Henry Cavill, I think there was a, watching we were watching it, a trailer yeah. for a uh, oh, Henry Cavill Argyle. movie. Yeah, the Argyle movie is coming out. Yeah, fucking yeah. I know. I I didn't I didn't look at you during that, but I was like, Sarah wants to watch that. I know for sure Sarah's gonna want to <laughs> fucking watch fun. that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks fun. It looks yeah, fun. it looks good. <laughs> yeah, you saw fucking Henry Cavill just dancing with a fucking with a lady. <laughs> And it was like, I could be that lady. <laughs> I could, I could not with. be that lady. That's Angelina Jolie in the thing. I couldn't do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I fucking yeah. up. Yeah. I don't know. I, was, I guess like, uh, it's interesting because yeah, I think like that's one of the, I think that's a more common like thing that I think is very- Like a common problem? Yeah. In, yeah. in some relationships. Yeah. And I don't knock anyone for not being against that in their yeah. relationship. Yeah. I, I am a little bit like, I think porn is fine. As if it's especially like OnlyFans stuff. If it's like they, the people in it are ethically making their own shit, yeah, and they make the money from the shit. What's compared to fucking like, wrong with looking at it? Yeah, I feel what's that. wrong with that? I don't understand why. Yeah, because I think like, and I think that's the real my issue with porn 
Happy anniversary, everybody. Happy anniversary. <laughs> We're talking about porn. We're talking about porn. We're so, right from where we started, our roots. Yeah, porn. our roots. Yeah, I, I think, like, yeah, that's my only critique of porn is the unethicalness of it. Yes. And I think, yeah, I, I know that there's been relatively better strides recently to make it more yeah. ethical, and I think that's great. I think there's a lot more strides that still need to be taken, because I know, like, with, like, OnlyFans, I have a, like, think of, like, the Andrew Tates, you know, of, like, oh, the, yeah. like, the, um... Like, there's still definitely opportunities for trafficking. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, for sure. Uh, scams and all that other shit. But that's also in any, like, like if you go on Instagram, fucking, there's going to be a scammer that's like, oh, I got a bunch of knitting materials. <laughs> we yeah, watching we just video, watched yeah. this. I've been be- and getting it's just back a drop crochet. shipping fucking scheme. Like, yeah. Apparently these guys bought knitting.com and they bought it for, for $80,000 80, the just the domain knitting.com that's before he had design costs and yeah and then they tried to fill it with like seo buzzwords for people to try to get into knitting and just make a make it a drop shipping site yeah, from fucking what amazon a fucking scam it's so funny yeah so i don't know it's very <laughs> yeah it's fucked up i don't know yeah it's no. really like i don't know i think that's the only issues i still have is like when it is unethical, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, to me, it's just, like, it's just work. Some, it, yeah, it's a job. Yeah. It's something like that. And also, I think if you're a woman and you want to show your, your biddies off, or you want to dress up, a lot of it is cosplay as well. Yeah. And it is more of, like, an arts and crafts situation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fucking like, go ahead and do it. It's awesome. You're honing a craft. A lot of it is, I mean, I don't know, from an art history standpoint i don't think there's really anything wrong with looking at idealized bodies i think the only thing is like if market marketing chooses to be like you have to be thin yeah if it's like you know there still think, needs to be yeah. some sort of inclusivity at the end of the day yeah there's a way to do this all because i mean i i think about this too because i really don't see the difference between us and sex work is they show off titties yeah <laughs> like at the end of the day there's not that much of a difference no. between like all right, we got to get a lighting set up, yeah. camera set up, yeah. sound set up, I assume. Like, I think you can be, and when I say idealized bodies, I actually mean, like, the actual term, like, idealizing your own body. Yeah. Like, using a camera to show uh, your body, which it might be not skinny, it might be not, you know, not white, mm. you know, not fully abled or something, but in a way that makes it aesthetically pleasing yeah in you know the eye of yourself isn't that a good thing yeah to feel good about yourself i get what what's you wrong mean. with looking at aesthetically pleasing bodies yeah you know but if there's someone trying to like say this is how i see an idealized bo- body and so everyone else yes yeah, so you to only think, can yeah. be white and thin and able-bodied yeah and then it's then you you that person has a Hitler mustache, you know, drawn yeah. on them, you know, yeah. Yes, blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah, everything. exactly. You know, yeah. that's the, you know, eugenics and shit. I don't know, man. Just let people. Just, just let, let people, people fucking vibe. People are going to jerk it off whenever they yeah, want, exactly. man. A lot of, I wonder if there's a problem with people being so anti sex that when they hear sex, it's, I have to critique it. I have to, it's not good because of these other things that I'm, that, you know, I want to bring up and it's like, okay, we can have a nuanced discussion about those things and some yeah. of them are valid, but a lot of it is just, you don't want to look at naked bodies because you're afraid of it. And I will say this is very much an Americanized problem. Yeah, but for like, I, sure. I, and obviously in other places too, but like, uh, cause I, you know, like the very like religious right that like, you know, like. It's really, it's really shitty. Yeah. Because, like, it, you know, it, it, it's one of those classic things, and the way I look at it is through a lens of movies of, like... Yes, yeah. You can show as much violence, as much, like, fucking some guy blowing up a fucking building. Yeah. And that's PG-13. But when you show, you show one blood, titty... But if you show a single titty, you're R-rated. Yeah. Or even if you swear, you, like, yeah. you know, like, and that's, that's a whole other issue. But, like, there's a very, like, the... I don't know, and that leads to a really sex negative culture. Yeah. And I feel like that that ruins it for everyone. Cause like sex is fucking awesome, guys. Sex is dope. 
and Liz, also I want to be inclusive because a couple episodes ago we said the whole lesbians equal vagina. Oh yeah, that was on and me. That's, that's my bad. That's fucked up. Yeah, yeah I do no, want to say. Yeah, I that's... don't agree with t- taking people down to their general uh, generals. Your generals. <laughs> their generals. Your genitals. I don't agree with that, and I do also want to make a space for people who are asexual. Doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have sex or they don't even like sex. It's that they maybe just don't think about think or about yeah, it. yeah as often yeah or they just have a differing relationship with sex and yeah you could be also a romantic like you're mostly sexual but you don't really care about romantic things yeah also that's also fine all of those things are fine but i think and i'm not talking about those people as well saying hey we should make a space for asexuals as well i don't think that's a problem i think it is a problem when you're like sex is bad yes yeah i know what i mean and everyone's talking about sex and i'm uncomfortable therefore i'm going to make other people stop talking and enjoying sex yeah. it's not going to exist yeah the, the prudishness i think is really the upsetting yeah. thing for me i don't know I, I get what you mean yeah it's very yeah. i don't know i feel like it, it's only yeah it's only american problem because i feel like i look and see other cultures and they're more sex positive compared to mm-hmm. us I don't know what fucking weird pilgrim ass Mormon bullshit happened in America. And that's the thing too. I've never seen an asexual person do that also. Yeah, for sure. I've only ever seen people usually associated with Christianity, sometimes not, just try to bring up other points of view that are sex negative. And then using it to get to the conclusion of sex is bad, stop looking at it. Yeah. Like, I don't want sex scenes in movies anymore. Yeah, I get what you mean, yeah. Why, it's not needed. I don't need it anymore. Mm. And it's like, well, who, just, who, like, come on. Who cares? Yeah, just let, I think you can write good sex scenes in movies. I think so, too. I don't think, I know there's a movie that came out recently that everyone critiqued it, and I probably, I'm willing to bet there's a good reason to critique it. Yeah, we it. haven't seen it, so we I haven't we don't know. It. Yeah. I think she gets up and looks at a book in the middle of it, which, yeah, that's lame. <laughs> Yeah, dog. Dude, oh, God. How do we make reading sexy? <laughs> it's like, because it's all about, like, you know, yeah, whatever. Things. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. So dumb. Yeah, that's dumb. That's stupid yeah, and dumb. Be dumb. Yeah. But, like, it should be the couple that went and saw that movie and the husband. Remember that? Oh, oh was like, yeah. There was a husband that was like, when I get triggered, quote unquote, A, I hate a that. Co-opti- a co-opting of an Not uh, that I actual... hate the word trigger, but like trigger is an actual thing for people who've yeah, been through abuse. Yeah, you're co-opting like yeah. this language for your own like... He uh, meant uh, getting sexually aroused. He's not saying we all... Like I read that and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, for when you get triggered watching a movie or something. That yeah. makes sense. If, if you, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. He was just talking about when he gets a boner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pissed off. I didn't realize any time I... I just, <laughs> Anytime I I get a, a you little, you get fucking horny. You, you're getting triggered. Yeah, that's not how that cause, works. Cause my, my the chemicals <laughs> in my brain are causing a chain reaction, triggering my cock to grow. Like this is a <laughs> is a Christian couple that do have sex, that enjoy having sex, but when they go out and they see someone else. Having and gets, sex in a movie, and, and they have an attraction. The also, husband. What happened? Well, hold on. <laughs> when the husband, I'm sorry, no, I have you're to good, explain it because we haven't explained it yet. Yeah. So what they would say is when they go out and one of them gets quote unquote triggered or horny from something that they see that makes them horny. Yeah. They turn to the other one and they close they close their eyes and they close their mouths and they put their head on the other person's shoulder to let them know that they've been triggered or horny. And that's what <laughs> happened in this movie where the sex scene happened that was very famous. Yeah. Where the husband turned and you know, the wife was like, she had to watch the whole sex scene, and once the sex scene was over, she would let him know that it was over so he could open his eyes and continue watching the movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. Like, chill out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. God. Like what, you're gonna go and sit and watch Magic Mike, and then she's just gonna fucking have her head on your shoulder the entire time? For 90 minutes straight. Oh, there's a little bit of clothes, honey. Oh, sorry. They just took no. it off. <laughs> oh, I think they're putting more. Nope. They're, never mind. Like, that's really <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> it's a little stupid. It's a little dumb. It's pretty dumb, man. Yeah, and it's also, again, the co-opting of the language is really fucking Th- infuriating. That was the worst part that's of it for me. That's infuriating to me, yeah. 
because they never really explained it. Especially like I don't even think like it's impossible to get triggered by a movie. Obviously, if there's like if you have you know sexual trauma of some sort and there's a sex scene, that's what yeah, I that's thought. That's a genuine like fucking yeah. When I read it the first time, that's what I thought, and I was like, that makes fucking if sense. It's a chemical process that puts blood in your fucking genitals. I don't know what I don't know how to fucking you gotta I, calm right, down. You gotta calm down. <laughs> That's who I'm talking about. It's literally just those two people. Those two people. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I'm talking about. No one else. No one else. Yeah, no, I get what Everyone you mean. Everyone else is valid except for those two. <laughs> <laughs> In this situation, those two people, yeah. Yeah. I feel you, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that's, yeah, it's a very interesting, I think, yeah, and I think, I don't know, I, I yeah. Yeah. I, I blame society for that. And I think, like, I don't know, for when it comes to, I guess, red flags, uh, I think there's a lot that like it's dumb. Yeah, that's a. It's like, a. I used to get caught up in it. The like, if he doesn't get you flowers every day, he could totally do it. It's like there's what also about money. Yeah, that's the thing. What if is he's like, really fucking poor? There's Apparently, like an, I'm not supposed to date a poor person or something. Yeah, and I think when some of the red flags, I think there, there's there are obviously genuine red flags, and I think like you know there's I, there's you know some of them are fucking classes. Yeah, that's the thing. I think uh, when it comes to the idea of like you know privilege and status and money, mm -hmm. I don't think you should only be dating people that make a hundred k a year. I didn't, where did that fucking come? Like where did that trend I come saw from? That happened. Some and I was like, these women have. They have to have been paid. Like I don't know what anyone it's a like that. to make women look bad and be like, I only make because is it like the median income also only like fifty or sixty thousand dollars? That's what I was thinking too. Do you not want fucking? Like, it, this has to be a lie to make men upset at women. Yeah, that's why I think it's a psyop. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. like the fucking the. Uh, I don't know. It's I guess like. Because every woman I know, they just want a man to not abuse them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's it. That's all they want. But you know, bar on the floor, obviously. And bar's in hell. And bar's in hell. I just want a boyfriend who pays attention and to maybe me and a isn't bit, mean to me. I think, yeah, the, the genuine word flags, I think. Yeah. I feel like if someone didn't have an emotional vulnerability or was at least somewhat... Yeah. Or not even prepared to become emotionally vulnerable. I don't even yeah. think you have to be a you have to be a perfect person before you start dating. No, that's the other thing too. If you have trauma, don't get into a relationship. Shut up, man. <laughs> that's so fucking stupid. I don't, yeah, I think it's <sighs> when you were diagnosed with ADHD. I went on the internet and I was like, my partner has ADHD, you know, and it's causing issues. And I was like looking at other situations of. Like, it wasn't personally causing issues in our relationship. I think it was just, like, misinterpreted mm. issues. There was a lot of, like, miscommunication happening between yeah. us, I think. Because we didn't have the words or the knowledge to deal with it. Yeah. And so I was like, what happens when people find out that their partner has ADHD? What happens? They Dumb break bum. up. <laughs> That's literally the advice is, yeah, you'll never be priority first or whatever because they'll always be thinking about something else. <laughs> and if you fucking blah 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 and shit like that and i was like this is able <laughs> i was like you're telling me that people with adhd just can't don't deserve ever love have a fulfilling relationship never never in a million years like i was reading that and i was like oh fuck that's crazy and then i had to have a, a point where i was like fuck that <laughs> like, that's wait not great that's second. not ideal this is fucking stupid fuck you quora of course it was on Quora. A fucking Quora, yeah. God. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> God, and they all, everyone who types that, they start growing again a little Hitler mustache. And, and that's why when I see shit online where it's like, oh, a, you know, sometimes they'll say like ADHD people have never been discriminated against. I'm like, go on Quora. <laughs> Just look it up. Yeah. Quora is the most ableist motherfucking website I've ever read in yeah. my life. <laughs> I think yeah. God damn, <laughs> Christ. I I yeah. I I do think like um. And I, I and I'm not even gonna like fucking. I'm not gonna do like some weird like fucking woe is me with my ADHD. But I'm mm. definitely like. I, I think with a lot of people that have some sort of like, like an ADHD autism shit like that. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. is definitely some a, a just a little God. portion of society that will be like, yeah, you don't deserve. X Y Z. Yeah, because, because your your brain's fucked. You yeah, know? like yeah, it, that's whatever. That's fucked up to hear. I it think that is, is a, a it's, yeah, yeah. 
you could even go as far as say that it is eugenicist because it's like you don't want people that to are neurodivergent extent, yeah. to be in a relationship or procreate at any point. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's really fucked up. I agree with that. Yeah. And this amount of like, I just, I've now been like, you people are cartoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like it, This is not real life. Yeah. I totally get what you mean. This situation, you know? Yeah. So yeah, as someone who's dated a person with ADHD, how do you feel? What do you think of everyone with ADHD? Generalize my entire group of people, please. (laughs) Thank you. Yo, so there actually was a TikTok of this wife, and it was like when you try to go to bed with your partner who has ADHD, and um... Is it gonna be, they put on a Wendigoon video, and just put it on their pillow next to them so they can fall asleep to it? No, And then they wake up at 5am to turn it off because they don't want to miss it, because... (laughs) That happened last night. <laughs> that did happen last night. I don't remember what happened. I woke up at 5 a.m. <laughs> and the video was still going because it's four fucking hours long and I put it on at three. I was like, all right, I'm going to turn this off. No, I think it was just like they're both like, all right, now it's time to get ready for bed. And then he goes, okay. And he gets up and he goes somewhere to do something to get ready for bed. And she's getting ready for bed on her own. And then she walks down and he's putting up wallpaper or something. And she goes, oh, you're getting to the wallpaper? And he goes, and she goes, oh, did I point it out? Now you don't want to do it anymore? And he goes, yeah. She goes, okay, let's go to bed. <laughs> it was just, it was so sweet because it, she wasn't like, honey, stop putting up wallpaper, go to bed. Yeah. She was, was like, oh, great. You're doing a thing. Yeah. But like that, she yeah. was trying to understand like with his brain that what, he was the, like, oh yeah, I need to do this now or else I'll forget. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's literally what it was. And she was trying to, like, be supportive, and then she realized... Oh, you did the thing, yeah. And a lot of it is learning. I yeah. think people just don't want to learn. Like, I think they want to be like, this is who I am. Someone must accept that me. Yeah. <laughs> I this, don't want to change. That's not how it is. Yeah. You get into a relationship, you learn, you should be curious and learn all about them, and they should be curious about you and learn all about you. And you kind of merge your lives together that's why you see couples that like end up looking exactly like each other when they're like 80 years old yeah they've just become they've congealed assimilated yeah and become one yeah yeah and that's what being in a partnership is like oh yeah for sure yeah Hmm. damn yeah damn i agree with that 100 percent. yeah i thought it everyone was like this is so cute because she's not shaming him or doing anything yeah it's great that's awesome. Yeah. Don't shame people. <laughs> Don't shame people for the things that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially well, it's if it's just like anyone. something like, stupid. But that totally would be like my mom's reaction to me doing something like that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is not normal. I get, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I'd be normal. Yeah. Gotta be normal if you want to be loved. Don't clip that. Don't clip that out of context. Don't do that. <laughs> you have to be normal if you want to be loved. You have to fix your... And depression, too. I have depression. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So many people would be like, I'm not willing to deal with you. You're not going out. (laughs) You don't want to go out. I want to go out, and I want to be with someone who wants to go out. Cool. Not me, fam. Yeah, it's not me. That will never be me. Straight up, I'm sorry. Maybe (laughs) if someday God, Jesus Christ, comes down and touches my head and says, hey, you're not depressed anymore. You're and saved. then it goes back up. That's the and only thing I'm up, doing. That's the only thing he does. Yeah, I did the whole fucking uh, Armageddon for just Sarah to not have <laughs> depression anymore. <laughs> it was fr- yeah, freeze frame. Yeah, fifty percent of the population leaves with him. Yeah, so funny. Um, but yeah, no, I think it, it, that's it's just it's chronic. Yeah, it will a, always. I will work on it, but it's chronic. Yeah. It's going to be here the rest of my life. Yeah, you know? exactly. I get what you mean. And sure, that guy wants someone to go out. He'll find someone to go out. Yeah. But I shouldn't have to fix my depression to be in a good relationship. With that person. Yeah. Or yeah. if anyone, yeah. Fix my depression to yeah, where I'm and perfect quotes. and normal. That's stupid. I go to my office job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. What about, okay, how did you feel in the beginning of our relationship when I didn't have a car and you had to dr- drive over to my house? Uh, I didn't care. I will say I, I I it's not your fault for me not liking driving and I want to say that because I do not like driving anymore. I think yeah, part of that was that wasn't you. Mm. It was when I went to school for a thing I didn't want to do, but I <laughs> thought I wanted to do. Right. So I think and that was like I would drive an hour go to cl- not even go to class and leave. Mm. I, I think uh, at least when I drove drove to you I was actually enjoying it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that wasn't an issue. And also where I was living at the time was so out of the fucking way. 
Yeah, you. Yeah, you that lived in so, a small town. Yeah, like an hour away in the outskirts of Orlando. Yeah, and yeah. like, I, and you know, I, I, yeah, that's not like honestly, I don't give a shit about whether or not you have a car or not. And honestly, we we don't. Another thing too is like when COVID hit. It didn't matter because like you were staying in and we were, I was staying in and I would still drive to you and pick you up and stuff. Yeah. It was definitely a very manageable thing. Yeah. That was, it was, it was definitely worth it in the long run. And that's crazy yeah. because you're the first guy I dated that ha- had the longest drive, mm. but you were also the first one to not complain about it. Yeah. Like there was a guy that broke up with me and his reason that he did say, which I think it was that he was dating someone else. We weren't <laughs> official, but so it was fine. I'm not worried about that. But mm. uh, I think he's told me the reason he didn't want to date me because he lived 30 minutes away and he didn't want to spend the gas. <laughs> yeah. And like I, uh, which I thought was so, and then like I needed a car basically to drive to him I to get, make the yeah. relationship work. Nah, fuck that. Which well, is that's crazy. also that's also pretty classes because you don't have the money to afford a car. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, not everyone can afford a fucking car. Yeah, and I do understand. Also, I was the friend that didn't have the car, and I felt really bad about it. Mm. And a lot of my friends were like, they didn't want to have to drive all the way to me, and I would Uber and take the bus and shit and yeah. try to do that, which I think is fine. And I understand yeah, yeah, sure. like. There is an emotional tax to be the person that... Yeah, and it's, it's not your fault, though. No. I think it's a crumbling infrastructure's fault. Yeah. And a car-centric culture's fault as well. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think a lot of issues that have arisen are genuinely not either of ours' fault. Straight up. But it is a societal, like like indifference i guess i don't even know how to describe it like i think some of the worst parts of our relationship which are really in the long in the big scheme we're not that bad but i think it it really was just i was stressed from work you're stressed from work and i had adhd and you had adhd and i have depression and most likely autism yeah and it was just very difficult to deal with all of that and also communicate it to our partner. Yeah. And figure out ways to emotionally regulate ourselves. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Damn. And also money issues as well. Oh, yeah, money issues were a big thing, yeah. Like, I feel like our relationship has gotten way better now that we're both not working jobs and yes. just doing this. Yeah, 100%. It's I like, imme- it was like even when I was, when I, even when at my last job, when I, when I went down to mostly going in only once a week, it was definitely getting better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. As I slowly weaned myself away from it. Yeah. Mm. So I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of external things, and it's not fair that there's a lot of external f- things that affect everyone. Yeah. That are shitty, that are dumb and stupid. Yeah. That uh, this, uh, th- that make it harder to enjoy what life, I guess, is supposed to be about and find happiness and find a partner that relates to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many fucking hurdles. You gotta a lot jump of hurdles. Through. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I will, it's interesting to me because growing up, with a mom that would take shit out on me. Mm. I always wondered, like, I knew very much, like, it's the stress from her job. Yeah. And I would sometimes use that as an excuse. If you're in a relationship where someone is abusing you, they still make the choice to abuse you. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Like, a lot of, everyone goes through stress at their job, but they don't come home and scream at their child or their partner. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I know we're saying that we're, we were both stressed. We never yelled at each other because yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, we would never scream or, you know, belittle each other. Yeah, just for yeah uh, that. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. It was just hard to be loving all the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, because stress. Yeah. Which I feel like is normal. I think if you're in a relationship with someone and you're both going through stress, it's a difficult situation because a lot of people will jump to break up. Yeah. And it's like, well, because of the, the, a small amount of stress and a small amount of time. That's enough, yeah, to... Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Damn. Hmm. That's cool. Crazy, man. Yeah, and I think it's just, you know, deciding, are you in this for the long run or do you not want to do this anymore? Yeah. And it's a tough decision to a lot of people. No, oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, yeah. uh, I'm in it for the long run. Me too. And I'm also contractually obligated. I'm to be contractually in it. obligated. Yeah. yeah, we don't have a wedding certificate, but I do have a partnership. I, feel, and I told this I, to your sisters too recently, where I was like, "We have a business together." I feel like that's like that's our piece the most, of paper. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. our marriage paper. Yeah. When Dude. when you have to be so fucking on top of like the money and like <laughs> yeah. knowing every single thing, yeah, yeah, 
We I might d- as well do that. Yeah. If we do an LLC, we're going to have a, to do our taxes together, too, anyway. All right, yeah. So, uh, do you have the receipts or not? Do you not? Sarah, you should have... Sarah, Sarah, you got to save the receipts. <laughs> if you don't have a receipt, when we go to 7-Eleven to get one drink that we can show on the podcast, and <laughs> <laughs> we don't get a tax reduction. Hey, it's fine. It's hey, $3. Whatever. We could have saved three cents. Hey, who cares? It's only three cents. <laughs> God, but happy anniversary, Sarah. The happy anniversary, Joshua. Good, good five years. Good to five the, to years. To the next five. To the next five. Or, or oh, will there be five? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Dramatic, like dun, 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 dun. next <laughs> five <laughs> years. Yeah, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe. How it. do we go on? Whoa. Okay, so fucking <laughs> people. I love it that people are like, I didn't know they were dating. I thought they were just best friends. I, I want to respond and be like, yes. Yeah, we are best friends. Yeah, yes, that's, we those are also aren't, best Those aren't mutually friends. exclusive. I think we did it's, say that last week, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's so funny to me because it's like, I mean, you what? Well, you're not best friends with your partner. Yeah. What do you? What do you? you what do you a, mean? Yeah. How? You just what? Have a roommate. <laughs> do you guys not hang out? Like, I get so fucking stressed when I look at like straight relationships sometimes. Yeah. And technically, this is a heterosexual relationship. But I mean, like both of them are are I don't know the straight vibes. You know what no, I mean? I get what you mean. Yeah, like the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift costumes of it all. You know? Yeah. Where it's just like I feel like y'all don't like each other, man. I get what you mean. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them. Not all. Of not them. all of them. Yeah. Okay. So right. Wattpad stories now. Wattpad stories. Yep. We do that. Yeah. We're moving oh. on from uh, the horror anthology that was like super ableist for some fucking yeah, we're reason. Getting, we're getting away from that. And we're now we're switching it up. We're switching it up. And I'm not telling you the title. Okay. And I want you to figure out. Damn, I can't believe you won't credit the creator. <laughs> well, I'll do it at the end. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So but we got a lot. We'll pad. put it in the description, actually. No, yeah, of Why course, not? Yeah, we should have yeah. been doing that anyway. Yeah. It's okay. okay. I'm just gonna read it and I want you to figure out what's happening. Okay. There are two elements that you need to figure out. Okay. Literal elements. Literal like, story elements. Okay. Like what did I type in the search bar to get this? I guess technically three. Technically three elements. Well, you you uh, you were looking up Omega verse stuff, so I'm assuming that's gonna be one of them. Okay, yeah, the the shrug is a yes for those of you at home. That's uh, I don't know the difference between Omega Verse and just regular werewolf shit. So, oh, it might be one of the two. Okay. Yeah, so it's one All of right. the two. Interesting. Yeah, chapter one, Jules POV. <sighs> so you know it's familiar. Jules. When I read that POV, I was like, it's familiar. Where are you? I'm trying it? to remember. I'm trying to remember any media of the name Jules in it. Mm. Psych. Psych. Yeah, Jules. <laughs> I watched so <laughs> that'd be amazing. God, I wish fiction. I did that. Holy shit. Oh, God. I walked down the street towards the bakery I worked at. It was freezing cold and my breath came out in big white clouds as I raced down the street, hands in pockets. I felt uneasy and edgy. My wolf <laughs> senses all perked up. All right, I think you just lo- looked up wolf. I don't think you looked up a megaverse yet. Okay. We'll uh, see. My muscles tense. Something was going to happen, yet I didn't know what. Spider Man. <laughs> Okay. Spider-Man Elsa. Finally reaching the bakery, I threw open the door. I was greeted with the smells of freshly baked pastries and bread. The place felt warm and cozy. I put my flower-stained apron on, checked in, and went to the cash register to wait for somebody. While I wait, I guess I'll tell you all about me. I'm a werewolf. (laughs) That's me. But I don't have a wolf side, just a wolf form. No other personality or anything. I have coal black hair with electric blue streaks that match my eye color. My wolf is the same, except it has streaks of blue here and there, and it's fur. I love animals, running track, and drawing. I'm 15 years old, and I live a normal life. That's okay. really cute. Yeah. That was a cute description. That was a cute description. Yeah, okay, I liked yeah. it. The bells on the door uh, of the bakery jingled, signaling somebody was walking in. I smiled and looked over at them. It was a guy with sunglasses and a hood on. Huh. I understand the hood, but sunglasses? Unabomber. <laughs> God, also so good. <laughs> Bro, if I had the fucking balls, I would have done that, but no, no don't, I don't no, have the balls. Don't, yeah, no, fuck that guy. <laughs> Hi, can I help you? I said in a cheery voice. Um, I have a big cake that I need help unloading. Can you help? He replied, hey, he's British. Sorry, I have to read, read that in a British accent. Um, I have a big cake. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you, I'm, I'm no, not you doing don't that. have to do a I'm British accent. That. Yeah, you you're don't. still offending all my British friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry, they can do oh, something. I got a big fucking cake. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what would, what would, uh, what would, uh, yeah, they'll do an American accent to you next time you talk to them and be like, man, I like concealed carry <laughs> and guns. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Sure. I smiled. Then I, being the lazy person I am, jumped over the counter instead of going around. It's not. That's more effort. Yeah. Why'd you jump? But you just go around. Yeah. We walked outside to a large green SUV. I opened the back, only to be greeted by not a cake, but a boy who looked to be <laughs> a little older than me. Grab her! He yelled. Huh? He's Irish. An arm made its way around my neck, tightening me in a Is choke this like hold. A, like a British Irish, Irish like fucking war of werewolves. No, uh, God, that would be uh, what the really fuck. Cool. I'm trying to think of things he searched. There's three elements, and I don't know any of them. I bet the audience knows. It good for point. you guys, but I need help here. <laughs> I yelled, my instincts taking over, my canine teeth enlarged, and I sank them down into the arm. It released me. I spun around to see who who was attached to the arm, only to be met by Mr. Sunglasses. I jumped forward on the edge of shifting when four arms wrapped around my waist. I let the my nails sharpen and shift into claws, flailing my arms to try and scratch somebody. I failed, and yet another set of arms pinned my legs to my side. Pretending to give up, I gave out a shrill yelp before going limp and with my eyes wide open. I'm trying to think of things you would fucking search. I actually I have no goddamn clue right now. Okay. <laughs> is it gonna be? Is it like Harry Potter? Or did you no, no, you couldn't know because I'm trying to I think of British Harry properties. Potter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretending to give up, I gave out a shrill yelp before going limp with my eyes wide open, focusing on nothing and a glazed look on my face. Liam, you killed her! I heard the Irish boy say. The fuck is Liam? Where's that from? Le- Hemsworth. I don't know his last name, but no, <laughs> no. I don't. Ah, what the fuck? You're closer though. It's a real man. It's a real uh, Liam. Who the fuck's a Liam? You grabbed her waist. Another British voice said, "Whom I, I was gonna am say assuming." Only plays, but that's Lyle. <laughs> no, that's that's not the right name. Okay. <laughs> Another British voice said, "Who am I assuming was Liam?" I was pulled into the SUV. Sunglasses jumping in behind me. I waited for them to shut the doors and take off before leaping out of their grasp. Countdown. What the fuck did you look up? Countdown. <laughs> ten, eight out of ten cats do countdown. Eight out of ten cats do countdown. <laughs> British comedians and werewolf. <laughs> What the fuck did you search? You mess with the wolf, you get the fangs. I said, my eyes glowing. They cowered up against the back of the seats. I let out a howl as I transformed into my wolf. Their eyes widened and they all blanched. I snarled, eyes still glowing in fury. Back bristling, hackles raised, ready to attack. I noticed there were five of them, but one was driving. Sounds about right, yeah. Someone needs to drive there are five a five of them. But one was driving. Five, but one's driving. What the? One fuck? of them is named Liam. Wait, is this? Oh, are you serious? You're not. No, we're not doing. No, no. You're gonna. You want to. You want to shake that fucking hornet's nest? I guess it's not 2013 it's not anymore. 2013 but anymore. like, you, okay. So, second element. Unless this is the third element, because there's three words: wolf, one direction. Is that? One Direction, baby! Is there any other things, or is that all three? Well, there's another thing that's happening right now. Kidnapping? Yeah! (laughs) Wolf One Direction kidnapped. So I searched One Direction kidnapping, because there's a famous Wattpad story about One Direction kidnapping, and then I found one that had a wolf in it. I'm so I hate this fucking show. I should I should call my old boss up and just be like, "You got any I gotta job? Go, I gotta go back to I work. I gotta go back in." <laughs> okay. Um. I snarled, eyes still glowing in fury, back bristling, hackle hackles raised, ready to attack. I noticed there were five of them, but one was driving. I leapt over the seats and tackled the one driving, grabbing his neck gently in my mouth. I did not want to kill him, just scare him. He let out a scream. Yeah, you don't want to upset the fan base by immediately <laughs> killing off one of them. <laughs> Are you fucking, dude? That'd be so funny. You just kill off like accidentally, like Harry Styles. <laughs> like just, just imagining Harry Styles in this van kidnapping a wolf <laughs> is really funny. 
did not want to kill him, just scare him. He let out a scream. One of the others yelled out, L- I think it's Lewis, right? Lewis? I don't know. I, why, don't look at me I like know. I know. I don't know. Lewis. I know Harry Styles and Liam now. Guys, you just tell me, I guess. Uh, Lewis, he shouted, leaping over the seats. He reached forward and grabbed my scruff, yanking me off the terrified boy. Lewis grabbed the wheel again quickly, sur- swerving to avoid hitting a tree. I growled and snapped and twisted in the boy's grasp, but it was no use. He was too strong, and there were too many of them. I whimpered, going limp, and allowed him to carry me back to the SUV again. Back to the back of the SUV again. When he sat me down, I just simply lay there, staring off into space. The boys all looked at me worriedly, but none came forward. Finally, after what seemed like ages, the vehicle stopped. Author's note. Hey, bet y'all missed us, A eh? Okay, new book, yay. <laughs> From L. So it's like a group of people, apparently, writing Okay. This. They're called the Nerds Who Write 101. Okay, all right. And it's titled, um, oh, fuck, hold on. Uh, yes, I want to add to library. You fucking know it. Yeah, we need to save this for later, yeah. Uh, what's it called? One Direction Kidnapped a Werewolf. That's what the title <laughs> is. That's why I couldn't tell you the title. You would have yeah, got it. <laughs> Just, yeah, I would have, yeah. All right, you ready for chapter two? Yeah, we'll do these two chapters at a okay. time, yeah. Chapter 2, Jules POV. Come on, girl, get up, we're home. The boy with the curly hair nudged me. I simply closed my eyes, still in wolf form. Liam, she won't get up, the Irish one observed. I heard a smack. Ow! Thank you, Captain Obvious, said a voice. I sighed and rolled rolled over. Felt two arms slide under me and lift me up. I stayed limp, my ears twitching as I heard the doors open. The cold air rushed into the van, but I only felt a little, a little thanks to my fur get them when they least expect it i thought i heard the key i heard keys jangling jingling then the click of the door being unlocked i felt myself being carried inside and set down on what felt like a couch where i pretended to be asleep wake up please i think lewis said i opened my eyes and looked up at him yep it was lewis giving my giving him my miserable puppy dog eyes i whimpered will you uh shift for us please they so, know about what? shifting yeah so hold on so Whatever fucking Illuminati ass fucking thing One Direction is that they know that werewolves exist. I love it. So there's like an entire genre now because I thought it was just one. There's a lot of words One Direction kidnapping. It's just kidnapping little girls. (laughs) No, no, little girls. You're right. No, because 15 is still underage. I'm sure there are some grown ass women who still love One Direction. I know, I know for sure. Yeah, but I mean, like in this story specifically, she's 15. 15, Yeah. Yeah. So. (laughs) <laughs> they are kidnapping little girls. They are kidnapping little girls. They yeah. are doing this fun, wacky crime. Yeah, no, this yeah. is jail time. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. It's a little weird. Yeah, the the it's fucking American horror story ass fucking. <laughs> but it's all one. Di- it's dude, all one dude, direction, dude. American horror story season wolf, and it's one direction. It's just all the people from One Direction. God, that kidnapping shit show, a wolf. God. Oh my god! That would be so awesome. I would, I would not watch it. I would watch I, it. I'd have to draw a line in the Are sand you fucking somewhere. Kidding me? I would that so show watch fucking it. Sucks. American Horror Story. Yeah, we have to watch American Horror Stories. Apparently, it's better. Actually, don't believe it. I saw some shit on TikTok and it was I actually kind of yeah. good. But yeah, no, I yeah, Jesus, this is some bad fucking <laughs> some kidnapping people <laughs> so weird why is this a genre What's... i think it's funny that to imagine that they're just running around trying to kidnap girls yeah it's, it's... as if they wouldn't just be like i want to be with one direction willingly yeah there's people that willingly like would want to be with one direction yeah what is this weird like why no, do you need to kidnap the thrill of the hunt or I guess. some yeah. bullshit like come on Will you er, shift for us, please? The one with the quiff asked. I think it's funny, too, because they're doing, like, visual descriptions, and people who are really into One Direction would be like, oh, I know that one. That's the one. I'm going into I this no blind. I have no fucking clue. If you, told, if you told me which one was which, I'd, I'd forget all about it. There's I'm, only one uh-huh. really famous one now, I think. Don't come after me. I don't know anything about One Direction. So, okay, so there, I, I guess there's Louie. There's... um. The, the other one, fuck! I thought I had it Liam. all. Liam, Liam, and Niall Harry. Horan, Niall, Harry, and then the one that does the pillow talk is Zach. Zach, what's his name? You're just saying Oni plays people. You've said, <laughs> <laughs> you've said <laughs> it's all Oni plays. plays people. I forgot his name. 
<laughs> but yeah, he he was the one that was like, I'm better than this. And then he left and he did one song and I haven't heard shit from him yet. Yeah, I don't I don't yeah. know. I I, no he was clue. the one that like broke it up. I haven't I haven't kept a track on it. No. Okay. The one with the quiff asked, I sighed and nodded, sitting up, my eyes glowing. I felt a tingling sensation take over my body. After a few seconds it was gone and I was back to my human stel- self, still fully clothed. Okay. Good. All right. Good. We're putting the rules down. I like that. Yeah. Rule. There's still clothes on. Yeah. Doesn't make sense, but it's okay. No, it's fine. It doesn't it's make fine. sense. We don't need it to make sense. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Just be clothed, fifteen year old Liber- girl. Libertarians being like, well, logically Fuck. speaking, libertarian, <laughs> 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 libertarian, <laughs> be like, fifteen year old girl has clothes on. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> I'm so pissed off. So angry. <laughs> God, that's suck my so, ass, libertarians. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Well, the boys stared at me in wonder, awe, and utter terror. I looked around. I was sitting in a pretty big living room with a fireplace off to my right. The sectional I was sitting on was a mocha color, while the walls were cream. There was a coffee table in the center of the sectional with hardwood floors beneath it. Oh, uh, I guess we should introduce ourselves, the one with a Bieber haircut said, <laughs> being the first to snap out of his, his trance. No idea what the fuck is. Yeah, I, uh, I don't, yeah. The others quickly followed. I'm Nile, the Irish one said. Zane. 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 It's not Zach. Yeah. It's Zane. 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 He's the Nile, one that did the pillow talk. Zane. Lewis, Harry, Liam. Okay. Yeah. I'm Nile, so the Irish one said. Zane, Mr. Quip said. Lewis. Lewis shrieked, making me cover my ears. Lewis! <laughs> <laughs> he's the gr- He's like the. the, the he's the, the wacky the, one. Yeah, he's the wacky one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's a, he's a, yeah. God, that's so weird. Harry, the one with the curly hair said, and oh. I'm Liam. Bieber look, look alike said, I'm Jewel. I stuttered purposely, trying to seem scared. Uh, are you gonna hurt me? I started shaking, also purposefully. No, of course not, Zane said, reaching to put a hand on my knee. I pretended to flinch. So wait, uh, causing so him to far, withdraw his hand. Yeah, so far, go. yeah, there hasn't been uh, acknowledgement from the werewolf that she knows who these people are. Yeah, does she? Yeah. Like, Maybe she doesn't. Is this going to be a story where it's like a non One Direction fan gets kidnapped and this is how they get Maybe they're fans? not famous yet. Oh, maybe, maybe this is prior to. Okay. Previous, yeah. Like in the middle of recording their first album, they just went on a kidnapping spree. <laughs> yeah, they don't even like, they haven't applied to. Um, um, this is how we disseminate the, the information God. of One Direction out. This is- what was it? It wasn't uh, America's Got Talent. It was the other one. UK's got talent. Probably. Whatever it was. Talent. The one with Simon. Of. Simon, he put them all together. Oh, X Factor. Was it X Factor? I don't know. I don't know. They started on some show and they didn't know each other and then they put them all together as a boy group and that's and how they Simon started. And Simon Cowell, yeah. Yeah. Fucking bastard. <laughs> and definitely go watch the Harry Styles audition one because he sucks ass in it, actually. And it's really funny to see. But also, if you're like, I want to sing, but I suck ass. You could, if you're attractive enough. That's society. It's a skill that you can learn if you're attractive enough. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> okay. How do we get the money? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, of course not withdraw his hand. Uh, why am I here? I forced a tear to run down my face. Dang, I should become a freaking actress. Well, Lewis dared Liam to kidnap you, Harry said, looking down sheepishly. And so we all did it. Because we're boys. <laughs> these are my boys, dude. I because gotta... these are my fucking boys. We're just boys. doing a silly, goofy little prank. Yeah. They just did a prank. The others followed in sync, especially Lewis. I forced myself to yawn so I could pretend to be asleep, but I actually use my wolf senses to eavesdrop on them. You seem tired. Uh, oh, how, do you, how do you say it? Nile? Nile. Nile. Nile Horan, right? Fuck. Nile said, wow, isn't he an observer? Why don't I take you up to my room and you can sleep in my bed? I nodded, standing up to follow him. We went upstairs down the hall to a door that had an Irish flag on it. <laughs> That's his only thing Salute. is that he's Irish. <laughs> Salute the Irish flag, baby. <laughs> okay, now I'll open the door and Just motion. Just four-leaf clovers all over the wall. Don't fuck Guinness. 
That's so Whatever stereotypical, up. like, fucking Irish, like... Yeah. <laughs> Niall opened the door and motioned to his bed. You can shift if that would be more comfortable instead of sleeping in your jeans and sweater, he offered, and I nodded, allowing my body to shift into my wolf. Niall reached out a hand, mesmerized, and stroked a blue patch on my chest. I licked his hand, showing my fake gratitude, before walking in and jumping onto his bed, laying at the foot of it and pretending to to sleep i heard the door shut and niles uh footsteps going down the stairs she's asleep he whimpered he whispered to the other boys he whimpered that'd be funny like <laughs> she's asleep he whispered to the other boys this will be fun what's Others gonna be know, fun at fucking with these boys i guess uh, yeah <laughs> and being a wolf oh i thought it was him saying that okay good no All right. it's it's god her. i've been fucking wild jesus yeah that's kind of fucked up author's note okay oh you all an apology i've been on my other account and i didn't realize how popular this got until i saw it and was like what it's like one of those like is like oh and then underscore o faces oh, okay and logged on and updated just for y'all yay from l damn yeah. Wonder what that what that's gonna our, happen. This is our new one. This is our new one. This is what we're doing. I like this is what we're doing. Yeah. We're fucking lives. <laughs> God damn it. We're going back to wolf <laughs> shit. A lot of wolf shit in this one. Really enjoy it. Okay. Enjoy it that there's a lot of wolf stuff okay, in here. Good. Yeah, I will say there's some the wolf stuff. The first yeah. one didn't have that much wolf stuff, not gonna but lie. But now we're bringing, we're bringing the wolf back. But I've been burned before. You gotta bring the wolf in. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring the podcast in. You gotta bring it the podcast in. It can't be out. You gotta have the Is wolf in. Is this even in. funny? You gotta bring the wolf in. I think it's funny. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I think let's, it's good. Let's know down below let if us you know like the... If you think if, we're if funny. You, if, let us know. <laughs> bring in those comments. <laughs> <laughs> gotta bring the comments in. <laughs> um fucking so, okay so we got i mean I, i'm excited for some more wolf stuff some it seems wacky like there are some, situations like, are gonna happen I think. yeah i feel you too yeah like you know i like that there is the wolf senses being used yeah i did i forgot about i think you've told me previously at some point in the past five years that like yeah there was a one one direction kidnap yeah, fan fiction but i yeah. didn't realize i didn't realize it went this deep no that like it's gonna be have a bunch I of crossover not, no either like have a bunch of crossovers with like other yeah uh like genres i guess of wadpad fan fiction it's interesting for sure yeah i'm curious to I'm see how this goes also curious yeah i'm not hating it yet no it seems pretty well it written. seems well written which is a uh, which is rare some wacky <laughs> things like jumping over the counter is funny yeah, like like it's an action movie. Yeah, and a lot of action, unnecessary action, which I think is interesting because we haven't seen that yet. A lot of it, the first one was like describing shit that didn't need to be described and then not describing shit that did need to be described. Yeah. And this one seems like, and then I walked, this was how I used to write when I was like 12, especially mm. if I was doing like, you know, cringy warrior cats role play. Um, yeah. You know, like, and then I walked over here and then I went upstairs and then I did this. And it's like no human being would do that many things. In a thirty minutes span. Yeah, I get what you mean. You yeah. know, I am. I have a purpose. <laughs> it's a very like. I do things. Like yeah. just calm down a little bit. Just calm down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So far, I'm enjoying this. Mm -hmm. But it could go either way. It could. It could it be good. Absolutely could. There are fourteen chapters. Yeah. So there's a lot of room still to. Yeah. Flop. You know. Yeah. For sure. Damn. Interesting. But, but we'll see. Yeah. Let's see what happens to this kidnapped werewolf. And these One Direction boys, they're yeah, unsuspecting. Little... I hope she just murders them all. That would be ideal. That would be... I want to start... I, would, I need more of the... Uh... I will say, though, they were able to get past the kidnapping of a werewolf, so I wonder... They're going to have like some weird powers, I assume. I think that would be. I think it would be cool if one of them was also a werewolf, because how do they know about shifting? Yeah. Is it like common knowledge? What's going on in this yeah, world? What's this, what's this universe? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I know nothing about One Direction at all. Yeah, neither do I. So we're going to learn all of our One Direction facts from this is what I, I'm hearing? I think so. I think We should say whatever bullshit comes from this. We should just say it as truth from here on out in our Absolutely. lives. Absolutely. Like One Direction. One Direction kidnapped a girl once. <laughs> And she was a fucking werewolf. Did you not know about Did that? Did you not know about that? Crazy. Dude. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about their personalities or any no, of the I memes. No, I don't know what their, like, yeah, like their, uh, whatever their assigned role is in the One Direction group. I have no idea. I have yeah. no idea. I don't know what Simon Cowell's plan was for them, basically. I, I don't think know what the, I, I thought I it was the just, marketing materials, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really get into them when I was a kid. I was more, I was really doing, like, my goth shit at the time. No, I get you. But I also didn't hate them. I'm not like a person that's like, fuck them. No, fuck yeah. Fuck One Direction. Because that was stupid. That was stupid. I will agree with that. Yeah. The whole hatred of Justin Bieber when he was a kid. 
made no sense. No, yeah. When he when he got eighteen and started. Well, fucking... yeah. When he started drag racing in Miami and causing crime. Yeah, doing crime. Yeah, a little, maybe a little bit more, and scrutiny. screaming at his wife in public. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's mm-hmm. fair to. Yeah. I, I understand the criticism now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, but when he was a kid, who ca- who gave a damn? Who cares? It was yeah, just you yeah. hated things that girls liked. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, damn. Ads, ads. Welcome to the ad break. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, are you enjoying this podcast so far? You know I am. Man. Good. Because then you can like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell. Hell yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Whoa. Good. Good. <laughs> but no, yeah, like, comment, yeah. subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell if Do you're enjoying it. If you haven't done that already, yeah. write us five stars on Apple and Spotify podcast if you're Please. listening on those platforms. Mm-hmm. And there's ways to support the podcast financially. I'm going to start off like I did last week with our coffee line. We got coffee. If you go to straightforcoffee.com or apwsdr.com, that'll, re- that'll be it. There'll be a link to redirect you to that website. Yep. Uh, we have coffee there. It's under the APWSDR name. Mm-hmm. Sarah has a blend, chaos blend. It has chocolate cream and it's a dark roast. Uh, Colombian bean. Colombian bean. I have a Brazilian bean, uh, light to medium roast, and it's a morning blend. It has caramel in it. Yeah, it's good. It is $16 a bag, $28 for the combo of both of them. Mm-hmm. Go check it out. Help support the podcast and help support a nice, uh, relatively small uh, coffee chain. Not chain, but... Coffee roasting company. Roasting company. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. They're really cool. They're queer owned also, queer operated. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's dope. Uh, if you want to support a couple different ways to help support us directly, uh, mm-hmm. we have buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSDR. You can say whatever you want, as mm-hmm. long, and we'll say it on the podcast as well as not racist, homophobic, transphobic. Anything. Yeah. yeah, as long as it's not bad. We got, I think, four coffees. Damn. We got four different people getting us four different amounts of coffees. That's nice. So, someone bought a coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Sarah and Josh. Hello. Josh, I'm sorry for my horrible grammar you're about to read. I'm dyslexic, and the English language okay. is my nemesis. You're good. No, no worries. worries. I can't read. That's my whole goddamn job. <laughs> you're mm. good. Don't worry. Mm. I can't. Uh, what, what's it called? Yeah, so you're good. Don't worry. I, I'm going to mess up on my own. Yeah. It's not, not it's even not related you. to you. Yeah. Yeah. I found you guys on TikTok about two years ago and followed you guys on YouTube ever since. When I was pregnant with my son, I'd listen to you guys as I played The Sims 4. He now loves listening and seeing you guys. My boyfriend has also started listening to you guys. I just want to say thank you for making me laugh and smile during the past two years and entertaining my little family and myself. It's so exciting to see how far you guys have come and even more to see exciting to see where this podcast will take you guys. Thank you again for being a light in this dark world. All the love from a little family in Kansas. So That's going to make me fucking cry. The yeah. whole APWSDR family. The whole APWSDR there. family, man. That's, That's wild. So I've cute. never thought that would happen. Me neither. Like, I know we've <laughs> slowly been growing, you know, but like, it's, it's like. Never uh, thought about a child listening to us in utero and then listening to us yeah, out of utero. Exactly. It's pretty. That's wild. That's wild, man. That's well, thank so you very sweet, much for the though. coffee and thank happy, you. happy family. Yeah. Congrats on your beautiful well. family. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, this is crazy. Where, yeah, where that's wild. <laughs> that's fucking insane. Salem, they then bought a coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Also, that's a cool name. Yeah, that's a good name. Yeah. Hi, I started listening to the podcast a few months ago and wanted to say thanks for the laughs and hot takes y'all have. Absolutely. I got my partner to start listening too. And we talk about each episode together as we listen. Cool. Being able to listen to older episodes during drives back and forth has kept both of us sane. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Or medium distance, and we've been living together. With, uh, we'll be living together when the next episode comes out. Woo! Kisses for both of you. Cool. Congrats, Congrats on moving in. And Hell good yeah. luck. Good luck. That's an exciting time. Very exciting time. We're happy to help out during yeah. those these exciting times. Figure <laughs> 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 guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Idiot Witch bought a total of ten coffees. <laughs> but they did. Uh, yeah, but they bought it in two different sets of five. Here's the first set. Hmm. Hi, Sarah and Josh. Love the podcast. The two of you are unjustly adorable. Oh my gosh, thank you. To love your coffee, the best on either side of the Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon. Three, am I the asshole for bullying white girls selling crystals on TikTok by commenting <laughs> in all caps, big shiny peen rock and calling them capitalist shills? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. I don't, I don't know enough information, but I do get I, the... I've recently started looking into doing crystals again, and mm. it is the most, like, thing that turns me off of getting crystals is trying to research where they're coming from and if it's ethic ethical to buy them. Yeah. If they're even real, if they're... Yeah, it's not Some like of them some... are not real. Yeah. And... Just the whole amount of research. I can understand that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. just in general too. I think, and I definitely it's like us having like a, a, this business. Like the idea of affiliate marketing sometimes is 
kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, in general, I don't trust crystal shops on TikTok. Especially yeah. the ones that do the scoops. Oh yeah, and the ones and yeah. I think yeah, I, I've, I I was talking about this last week. The 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 drop shipification like it, TikTok, I feel like it's yeah. rife there, you know. Absolutely. Or it's it's very it seems like very exploitable, and I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. Like even like I don't know like I've gone back and forth about like if I did like a kit dot co for the podcast no. like even though it goes through Amazon, which is the only thing I'm not super thrilled about. I feel I like don't know, I don't know if I would do that. Yeah, yet. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I get it though. You can call them capitalist shills. Go yeah. go ahead. Big peen big, shiny rock peen is rock. hilarious. Also, this is the next set of five oh, yeah. coffees. Also, Sarah, be gay and do crimes. Sorry, Josh. Here's some money for her bail. Thank you. It's not even for me. It's just it's, it's you. for you. It's, it's the co- the money's technically for me to give you for your bail money, dude. I'm actually gonna go do a crime now. Don't. Yeah, I will. There's no crime that has a bail of fifteen dollars. I'll look, look it up. <laughs> I do. This is not the express opinion of ABWCR Productions. This is not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Uh, but thank you all for the coffees. We really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you, if you have any, uh, if you have any recommendations for crystals, put them in the for sure. Yeah, down below. thank you all for the coffees. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a call to action. Buy us coffee for our anniversary. Oh yeah. Or buy yourself coffee for our anniversary. Yeah. Do some sort of consumption and giving us money for our anniversary. You don't have to. Just Do watching it is right enough. Right now, it's our anniversary. Oh when my this god. Goes out. I got a gun. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it was a finger gun for those of you listening on Spotify. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun. Don't demonetize. Don't demonetize this. Please. Please. Uh, if you want to support on a more monthly or yearly basis, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash ABWSTR. We have exclusive content up there. We got Thus Spoke Sarah Thustra, which is Sarah's podcast. We did Indeed. fireside chats. We're reading a fan fiction about a door fucking a girl. And we did get we to, got the, to the... We, we got, got to, to the, the fucking... Yeah, it'll be coming out soon, hopefully. So... We've just gotten back into reading two extra Reddit stories. We did that right before doing this podcast. That We're trying to get more exclusive content out for everybody. The door fucking was... It was a lot. ...an experience. It was awesome. <laughs> I read it. Definitely was work. So if you want to hear me explain how... Yeah, I'm not uh, doing that for free. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you, want to, if you want to see how I explained and read a door getting fucked... Really, the door one, fucking the lady. Yeah. You can wow. go to Patreon. There's one, three, five, and ten dollar tiers. They're all available for yearly. There's a free subscription for one and three for, for a whole seven week, days. For seven yeah. days, so you can just get a feel of what we do. Yeah, we appreciate all the support over there. If you have five or ten dollar tiers, mm-hmm. uh, you get your name added to the end of the podcast as well as in the description. Yep. And if you want to, also channel memberships are also an easier way to get into. If you don't want the yes. extra content, but you want your name at the end, and also go and subscribe to APWSTR Gaming. We're trying to get to five hundred, so we can have channel memberships on there too. And we do live streams. We do gaming yeah. over there. That's more where we we used to do live streams on this channel, but now we've moved them over to that channel. So yeah. I understand if you want to cancel your membership here because you don't have the emotes and shit here because yeah. we don't stream as much. We're working on getting emotes up over there. Though. Yeah, we're gonna work on that. Once we get to five hundred, we can do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also check out twitch.tv forward slash a guy named JC. I stream on Fridays. I stream on the APWSDR gaming channel. Sorry to take your spotlight, Josh. <laughs> um, I stream on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Um, on the APWSDR gaming. Bye bye. <laughs> and you can go to Twitch and use a Prime sub over there to help support me and my streaming career. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? I guess it. I think we did everything. There's a Skillshare link down there. It might work. Who knows? You te- test it. Test it. One person, maybe, please. Yeah, yeah. One, one person. person. One person. No one has. Just do. Be. Maybe you're the. You know, maybe, the maybe King the, Arthur. Yeah, you can take the sword and you out. You can yeah. take the sword out and actually do the Skillshare shit. Yeah, but I think it's everything. We're working on getting a new merch st- uh, shop set up as well. Yeah, we'll we're going to do stickers. But yeah, but also it's just with stickers. Tea. With T Public, right? Oh yeah, we're working on like actual merch, or maybe we'll do another site. Yeah, other than the one that we have up right now, because that one's some baby back bullshit. For yeah, sure. there's been some issues with it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll we we'll, well, you guys know about that near in the near future. Yeah, but stickers definitely are coming, are coming out, out soon. Yeah. Soon, yeah, for sure. All right, so until then, see you. Uh, go back to the show. Bye, bye. I'm ready for some Reddit. You're ready for some Reddit. I'm ready for some Reddit. Can you believe that all of these are fake? <laughs> I was wondering who was gonna bring that up first, <laughs> and it wasn't me. So someone stitched us, and they were like, "This is obviously f- it was the financial abuse one about the seventeen-year-old 
Yeah, uh, that might not even have been 17. Yeah, he lowered the ages. She was actually uh, like 19. Yeah. And someone and said... And someone was like, no one would be this evil. This would never happen. If someone is this, you know, you shouldn't think about it. And then and accusing then, us of... Well, not them, but like comments were like, this is propaganda. Yeah, like, if you sell a fake story to me as real, which we don't do. We don't know if these stories are the stories, fake or yeah. real. And I think... And I, I made a mistake with that one, too. In the TikTok, I, I cut out part where I said fake story AI. Yeah. So I could have... It could have... Yeah. Well, like, even that's a joke. Like, we don't fucking know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. There's no way for us to know the full intent of someone posting these. We try our best to not choose ones that, that are seem obviously AI generated. Obviously or AI like, generator or rage baked to us, but of course, I mean, we're not perfect. I think yeah, I th- yeah, we try to look for stories that I think are at least somewhat plausible and yeah. like I don't know, I think it doesn't matter too much about whether or not it's real or fake. It's how our reaction if we had something similar happen to us. We're more talking about the post. Yeah. Like, I can't believe someone would post this. Yeah. Rather than if it is real or if it is not. And then I think we talk about, I think we usually say at the end, like, if this is real, this is fucked up. Yes. Or it's not fucked up. Yeah. Usually. And also that financial abuse one, ironically, I go on to talk about how I've been through that and many 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 other people also commented up very similar up situations they've yeah. been through situations like that as well and i just think it's so funny to invalidate people that have been through that by saying no one is this evil yeah and that's yeah very obviously like i think that that pissed us off and we're not gonna link to the video obviously no, no, it's, no. it's like a small person that's the like, only reason it, we didn't like respond to it is i don't want to like brigade them yeah no i don't want to no, no brigading no hate to them but it's just, it was so funny, because I want to think ethically about what we do, right? Yeah. I want to really bad. And I, that's why I go on TikTok, and I look at the messages, and I look at the stitches, because I want to see if there's something that we're doing that's not, that's just, I haven't opened my eyes up to it. Yeah. And it's not ethical. And I just, this one, I just don't agree. Like, it, they're stories, they're rumors, they're situations, we don't portray them as real. We just read them as are, and then we react to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think every single one, there, yeah, and I think and we also, I do joke all the time of, like, you're writing the story to make yourself look as good as possible. Yeah, even then. Like, you even know, the idea might of an unreliable a, narrator. A nugget of a truth, but it might not always be true. Yeah, exactly. It's just, we're fucking reading Reddit, man. Yeah. Come on. I don't know. It's, uh, how is it on us and not the person writing the fake stories on Reddit? Yeah, why is it on on them? Yeah. And also, I mean, you know, it's my personal opinion, but growing up, it was like, yeah, everything's fake on the internet. Yeah. Like, it's not real. It's not that surprising, yeah. But also, it's so funny because this used to be a situation where, like, people would post hashtag that happened, r slash that happened. <laughs> yeah. And then because so many people thought that, you know, everything was a lie on the internet, they made the subreddit. <sighs> r slash nothing ever happens <laughs> yeah. which is so funny because yeah, it's yes, just a cycle loop of like a <laughs> trust and distrust if you're being realistic it's <laughs> some things happen some things don't happen but a lot of things are plausible a lot of things are plausible a lot of things happen to people in real life whatever that are at it's least not similar. a misanthrope camp it's not propaganda it's not <laughs> not exploitative it's not those things yeah. it's just we're reading just reading man yeah and we also explicitly try not to choose stories that are rage bait to get mad at minorities we understand that oh, that's yeah, something yeah, that it, exists yeah and I, we yeah. explicitly we're stay away from those that. things yeah so like yeah sometimes we have blind spots and we do choose stories that you know we think oh my god that's crazy i can't believe yeah. it there's a little bit of work that goes into this show. Just a little bit. You gotta yeah. trust us, you man. You gotta trust I'm us sorry. a little bit. Yeah. You gotta trust us a little bit. We do a little bit of work. That being said, every story we're reading tonight, 100% real. 100% real. 100%. <laughs> Explicitly, I'm saying that right now. <laughs> no. We've verified <laughs> every single story. We're journalists. We're journalists here. We're not just a fucking Reddit podcast where we read it. Yeah, it's a yeah. I get what you mean. I just want to bring it. I guess we're bringing it up real quick because I I, uh, yeah. Because it freaked and man, it really pissed me off as someone who went through that. Someone was being like, "Oh, what you Cinderella never happen." Yeah, it was like, "Come on, man." Yeah, it's very invalidating. It makes the real shit that we've went through feel invalid because they can't believe it could happen to anyone else. Yeah, it's the just and I talked about it on Twitter a little bit, but I was like. It so reminds me of going up to someone and being like, my mother is abusive. And then they would be like, yeah, I got a mom that yells at me too. 
just you don't think that this life is a situation where bad things can happen yeah and people react in ways that are not it's Rational just not trauma or, informed yeah, for yeah, real i agree with that yeah. i don't know fucking piss me off anyway welcome to the red segment Whatever. on the off chance that that gets cut out <laughs> yeah okay let me find my yeah i yeah should i should i prepare should i have my story set up and ready to go you know, should probably. i probably should i like do should i not just leave in a bunch of dead air <laughs> Just right, yeah. Oh just, my god. Okay, but yeah, welcome to the red segment. Welcome, uh, Sarah. You got five stories for us. I do. Okay, I'm gonna start with the dog one because this one's really funny. You got a dog one? I do have a dog one. Yo, can we pet the dog in this <laughs> in this Reddit story? In this Reddit story? <laughs> um, I don't think I have an opinion about this. Okay. Genuinely, I just think it's a really funny fucking story and a really funny thing that happened. If it's real or not, I don't care. You don't give a shit. Yeah, it's just put this in the TikTok. I just think this is really funny. Okay. Okay. Am I the asshole for causing a scene after I, 23 male, <laughs> lost a costume contest to a dog? Three. <laughs> it is funny to put the agent of the dog. I think that's, the title. that might be an indication of it being a little bit fake, but also I love it. So it's, it's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. I am genuinely losing my mind here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Same. Hashtag same. <laughs> so I love Halloween. I love making costumes and putting a lot of effort into it. My friend hosted a big Halloween party at her place and said there would be a costume contest for who had the best Halloween costume. So wait, wait, hold, wait. Okay, hold on. So it's not even like a real. No, it's just like going it's to like, your friend's house, and then we're gonna do like a little vote about who has the best Halloween costume. Yeah. It's not even. Like, is there a cash prize? Yes. Who had the best Halloween costume under fifty dollars? Third and second place would win $25, and the first would win $50. Oh, okay. The stakes are relatively low. Yeah. Relatively low. It's not like $1,000. Yeah, you, be, someone yeah, gave $1,000 to a dog. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so not a huge money prize, but enough to offset the price of the costume. And to me, it was more about the fun of the game. Okay. I wanted to win, so I pulled out all the stops and went as Zorro from One Piece and only had to buy $40 worth of material. Okay. Cool. Fair. When I got to the party, I saw other costumes and there were some fierce competitors, but honestly, I think I had the best costume. Newsflash, everyone thought they had the best costume, yeah. but okay, I mean, whatever. It's fine to think you have the best costume. I think costume. it's fine to think that, yeah, but yeah. It's, if you put a lot of effort into it, I think it's fine. I thought maybe it was too obscure to people who don't know anything about anime, and that might not go well, but it was a good costume. When the winners were announced, I got second. This bums me out, kind of, but hey, I still did well, and again, if I had went with something more ubiquitous, maybe people would have gotten it. Yeah, that's, yeah. However, the, the issue arose when they announced the first place. First place was a dog dressed in a pirate in one of those shitty Party City pirate costumes. <laughs> but he's a little pirate. <laughs> he's a cute little three-year-old dog. 21 in dog years. He's, he's, he's just a dog in a pirate costume. People probably like dogs more than human. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta read some comments too once we're done because they're some of my favorite comments. Okay. That Who cares? It's a fucking... It's a 50... Uh, okay, all right. Okay, yeah. So if I had lost to another person, I wouldn't have cared. But I had a few drinks in me and my inhibitions were lowered and it was a fucking dog. So I out loud <laughs> asked the host, really? the dog one and she said uh and she was said yes and was gushing about how cute he looked i said that it was a dog and it didn't even have a say in what it was going as i told her that this didn't seem exactly fair who cares it's a fucking cute little doggo with a pirate he's a little pirate dog he's <laughs> I just who cares? I, I, I get I feel, not having an opinion on this because like who fucking cares? But like I just like the chaos. I think yeah. <laughs> I think I'm it's just a like fucking dog. Like it's funny I to mean, be listen, mad at a dog for listen, winning. I get like yeah, fifty bucks and it would have offset the costume. Yeah, sure, okay. fine. I just fifty bucks is a decent chunk. Of, you're still getting twenty five bucks. You're not like completely losing. I think if I was there, I would be laughing at this situation yeah like, that's why i just i don't have the heart to tell this person they're an asshole because i want them to keep being like this <laughs> <laughs> like you're an asshole in yeah, a funny way again it's the it's the um actuallyness of like you're not fucking mike trap you're you're yeah. you're some guy you're just a guy it's funny yeah. as fuck um, okay. actually what's a dog gonna do with money a dog does not understand <laughs> this dog can't use human money <laughs> it's really good Christ. 
God, I can't believe that the story isn't real. <laughs> like, of course not. It's a dog in a pirate costume. Yeah, I get you. It's yeah. so funny. Uh, she told me to lighten up and that it was supposed to be fun. I told her that it's ridiculous. She's about to give the $50 prize to the owner for spending 20 bucks on a cheap Walmart dog costume when me and whoever was in third place actually made our costumes. She got mad that I called her ridiculous, and things kind of escalated into a full-blown argument that required my friend breaking us up. Th- I was then- What the fuck? <laughs> F- throwing fights. Throwing fists. Throwing fucking over punches fucking- <laughs> over a dog and a pirate cop. This fucking dog doesn't deserve it. I gotta, I gotta draw this, but it's just like two friends screaming and yelling, and it's just like a dog in the middle in a pirate costume. Yeah, like... like- yeah, just it's like so fucking cute. vibing. Yeah. Yeah. I was then kicked out of the party for embarrassing the host like that. So I don't think I'm the asshole because, like, obviously that's not fair. If it was a dog costume contest, if it, but having a bunch of people compete and lose to, it's not fair. If it was a dog costume contest, I think they meant to say I understand, but having a bunch of people compete and lose to someone's inbred bulldog Whoa, is so fucking unfair. All right, <laughs> fuck you, guy. Holy shit. <laughs> I think I was justified in saying what I said. People there said I should have just taken the 25 and called it a day. Am I yeah. the asshole? Yes. Yeah, you're an asshole. You are acted like an asshole to where you were fighting someone over a dog costume. Yeah. Like yeah, l- l- listen. Oh, it wasn't in the fine print that you can't. You got to bring it. You can, the dog counts. Whatever. Who cares? It's a fucking fifty dollar contest. Yeah, I think you were just at a, a friend's house. I think a little bit. Like if you have people that really care about it, I think they should get recognition. But it's like the it's the fucking um it's like the it's the fucking am I the only one here who cares about the damn rules? Yeah. Like, are you really gonna pull out a fucking gun right now? It's a little lame, especially since it's just like your friend's house. It's not like a real costume party. Yeah. Or a costume contest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not like the mayor is giving the, the keys to giving a city a, the, the, to, to a, a dog. dog in a pirate costume. Yeah. It's, it's, which yeah. even then, it's like, it's such a funny thing to happen that I could understand people would get mad at you for being mad at that too. Because yeah, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. Like, stop ruining the fun, man. Stop ruining the fun. I get it. But also, I understand getting upset. A little bit. I get it. If you but put like, all that effort in, but you kind of put that on yourself. You didn't need to do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess, yeah. I think if I was in that position, I personally would be like, whatever, I lost to a dog. That's a funny story. Yeah. That's a great story to tell people. I don't think anyone should be punched over this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what are these comments then? So this one, there's a couple comments that were my favorites. This one, uh, how are you, it's you're the, everyone is very firmly, you're the asshole, which it feels less like they're actually an asshole and more like these people are like, the dog costume is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're so pro-dog that they're anti this person, which I Dude, think is really funny. Oh my funny. god, can you imagine anti-dog reposting this like, can't believe all these f- this fucking, fucking dog get- is infiltrating <laughs> costume contests. <laughs> and uh, winning money so they can take over the world. Ooh, yeah, Planet it's so of funny. Dogs. Planet of the dogs. <laughs> How old are you to be this pissed off at coming second place in a Halloween costume contest? You can't be 23. You, that's a really 23 thing to do, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. What are you talking about? I'm getting a little upset over a fucking, uh, Why are you treating 23 like it's 35? No, yeah, you're still young. Yeah. Your Four brain years ago, he was developed. 19. One Joe Biden ago, he was 19. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, like. Yeah, dog. Seriously, people lose to toddlers, dogs, cats, even a plant or two. This happens? I've never done a costume contest. A, a plant, I don't think I've ever seen. Unless it's like someone made a paper, like a like a, the, a Little Shop of Horror guy. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. I guess that's fair, but like... But I mean, like, I don't know. I guess I just have never heard of this. It's like, yeah, people mm. lose to toddlers all the time. Like, really? I yeah, didn't know. Like, yeah, I guess. If you can't I guess re- it's possible. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If you can't regulate your emotions, then you deserve to be kicked out of every party you attend. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> this is what I mean, also, favorite. yeah, if you're fucking drunk and you're just ruining the vibe by yeah, yelling and that's slurring what it your is. words of like, I fucking beat a dog. <laughs> I beat a dog. I want to be. I, oh. I did. The, I can drive. I can drive. I can drive. It's fine. It's all good. I can drive. Yeah, give me my keys. Um, okay, this one's my favorite. Okay. Why did you think that dog wouldn't win? <laughs> <laughs> it's a dog dressed like a pirate. I'm reading it this should verbatim. Win. <laughs> you know, 
I listen. I know you're reading this thinking it's funny. I do agree with this unironically. I know, but it's the next part is what really gets it for me. Okay, you're a dude huh? dressed up like a dude. Of course, the dog was going to win. If you had dressed like a dog, you might have won. You're the asshole. <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. Yeah, like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's so like good. A dude. You're a dude dressed up like a dude. It's such a funny fucking way to describe it. I don't. Oh my it's like God. yeah, this is a trans species costume. Yeah, that's why it's it won. Yeah, this dog is like the dog thinks it's <laughs> the a dog human. Tried harder than you. It's really good. I think, yeah, I think that. Oh my God. Well, because also that money, you know what? The dog earns. <gasps> a, I think the dog deserves a few treats for going along with. I don't care. Up. I don't care if this is fake. It's funny as fuck, man. Don't tear this away from me. It's so good. Reducing the amount of joy in the world. <laughs> God. Yeah, just because you're like, this is propaganda. Dogs can't, <laughs> dogs can't win dress costume themselves contest. Up. Um, actually, dogs do not have the ability to put themselves into costumes. This is the most Reddit comment I've ever read. Yeah, okay, yeah. Info, can you share photos of this pirate dog <laughs> so we can judge for ourselves? I want photos yes. of the dog, yes. please. Yes. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> That's ideal. This Perfect. one's also really good. Okay. I respect the work you put into your costume for the money you saved doing so. I also understand that you were frustrated with the whole situation and the alcohol didn't help, but here's the thing. You lost to a dog. <laughs> Get over it. Get the fuck <laughs> over it. <laughs> oh my god, my throat's genuinely hurting from how Dude. much like I'm smiling and laughing right now. It's so much joy. How could you not want this? I'm sorry, but you lost to a dog. Get over it. One of my favorite things I've read all year. And we read a lot. Yeah, that's that's uh. like the best stuff. We should have stopped the podcast. We can't beat this. Okay, your friend. Is this, uh, how many more comments do you got? I'm just gonna read the the rest of this one because I don't even think I read the full thing. I just read the. It's on a separate line. Oh, okay. You lost to oh a dog. Get God. over it. Yeah. So I just read that, and I was like, I gotta read this because it's so funny. Okay. Your friend clearly likes dogs over people, and regardless of what the dog was dressed as, it probably would have won anyway. Yeah. You recoup some of the money you spent, apologize to your friend, the dog's owner, and anyone else you got into an argument with. There will be other Halloween parties in the future. Maybe just accept the invites for ones there, <laughs> that there are no pets allowed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe there should be, yeah, read the fine print, asshole. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's so fuck. Yeah, obviously an asshole if this is real. Like, yeah, comments, like, it's so, like, how did you, like, Reddit really misses the point in the funniest way sometimes. Yeah. Um, of course you would lose. It's, it's a, a dog. dog. It's a dog. They're dumbass. adorable, dumbass. Yeah. God, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, the dog should win. And sp you know what? The dog has a better attitude than you. <laughs> I think if this didn't happen, it would have been not as fun of a party. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I think. Yeah, personally, I want to live in a world where there's a bunch of fun happening. It's I want to live in a world where someone screams at someone else because they lost a costume party to a dog. Yeah, that's what I want. God, solve that, dude. Because you're basically just like <laughs> harassing them for twenty five dollars. Yeah, just like, give me my fifty. I want my whole fifty. Being going to the dog and being like, you better give me fucking twenty five dollars. Snatching the money you out of the dog's stealing mouth. Pirate. Yeah, that's what pirates do, though. They steal. I know. That's a more committed costume, then. Exactly. And that's why they deserve the money. But OP is also a pirate, because it's from One Piece, right? I don't fucking know. I don't know what One Piece is about. Someone said it was about politics. Someone else said it was about being misfits and having friends. And I think it's just about playing at the beach. That's what <laughs> I see. All right, that's fair. That's what it looks like to me. Everyone is just having w big arms and yeah. playing at the beach. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Solved it. It's all the okay. I got a really short one, oh. and it's from a, it's from one we don't normally do. Okay. <sighs> True unpopular opinion. Nice. Non political. Nice. 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 These I see these all the time, and they're some of my favorite things. I got to do with those books, Zarathustra, on these because yeah. they're really fun. But okay. True unpopular opinion. Non political. Uh huh. Washing a dish that just had only water in it is ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like the title says, I get a cup of water and drink it, 
and just give it a minor rinse and back in the cupboard it goes. Sarah, okay, Sarah, scale of 1 to 10, how angry do you think this guy's about to get? 10, 10, <laughs> yeah, okay. 10, 12, 15, 20. <laughs> Let's fucking go. There's no fucking reason to put it in the dishwasher and waste space and time. I mean, it's just fucking water. Then you have people that will say, what about germs? Question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> Like what about, I, them? <laughs> <laughs> what about germs? It's not like we just went through a whole fucking pandemic that's still going on. Yeah, I was gonna say if you just rinse it, it doesn't really scrub the the yeah, lip germs. Yeah, you put your fucking mouth around yeah, it. Yeah, you did yeah. put your mouth around it. The, the people have say like, "What about germs?" <laughs> like I give a fuck. <laughs> that's in there. Yes, that I'm not changing anything. I'm not adding shit to this right now. Like, I give a fuck. Dude. You shouldn't be using my cups anyway. Now, maybe there's a the restaurant... <laughs> what? Oh, this, this is not typed out well. I'm sorry. That's fine. They <laughs> never are. True unpopular opinions never make <laughs> any damn sense. This is not the... Yeah. You should... Now, maybe there's the restaurant exception, but at home, I'm not washing a dish that only had water in it. Hell, most drinks, I just rinse the cup out and put it in the dry rack, be it beer, wine, soda, etc. That's fucking crazy. Oh, is it? Oh, do you think yeah. this... Yeah. Uh, Sarah, do is you think... Is it gonna get crazier? There's one sentence left. Oh, yay. Milk is my exception, though. That's a pretty big exception. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, milk is the exception. Yeah, milk is the exception. That's yeah. the title of this podcast. Milk, milk is, is the, the exception. exception. Oh my god. <laughs> See, these this is really how can this be misanthrope training camp? Yeah. <laughs> I love these people. Like I don't this guy needs to exist. I hope this guy exists. This guy has a purpose for existing and it's making me laugh. That's what it is. <laughs> this guy is so fucking in tune like with this. Just no cups go in the dishwasher except unless there's milk in it. <laughs> That's such a like weird you're drinking thing a big to say. glass of milk and take a couple like, snips honey, you dump it. I don't agree. This needs to go into the dishwasher. But I'm not going to tell you how to live, you know. <laughs> you can give yourself botulism if you want. I don't give a shit. Yeah, soda, wine soda. and beer. Some of the most sugary, Very sugary, yeasty things. And you're just letting that fester on your glass? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think you do need a little you bit of need, clean. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just so, a little bit. Just so funny the attitude. So mad. The attitude of like, I mean, who gives a fuck? It's someone. It's someone that you would meet at a bus stop or like, uh, you know, just in pu at a bar, you know. Which and they all, start screaming about this thing that you don't give a shit about. Yeah, and like also like, it's so obvious that this guy, if he's real, has had friends over to be like, and you they don't care. Wash. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, "Why the fuck are you using Stop my dishes my, anyway?" My cups, like he or like his family has sequestered him to just like four cups, and he has his own cups, and now he has to deal with it because yeah. he's so belligerent about not washing. I'm not his gonna cup. wash these fucking cups, and that's really funny. And I think he should exist. Like those are my favorite instances in my life when I've been out and about, and someone comes up to me and starts saying some crazy shit, which is also why I don't understand the if it's real if it's not real situation how do you know what someone's telling you is fucking real yeah just in in real life you don't you have no idea no i totally get you yeah but it's about the experience man it's yeah. about sitting there and some guy being like i don't wash my dishes <laughs> i don't do it if it's just water in there i don't see the damn reason and you're just like yeah man you're so right I, listen i don't care if i've fucking sure. spit into it i just i'll rinse it out baby I don't give a shit about piss in it. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. We got, we're going there. Yeah. My favorite instances in life. If you took that away, my life would be shit. No, I feel you. Yeah. Like, for real. God. Some of my favorite things. Fucking awesome. True unpopular opinion. True unpopular opinion is a really good one. If you yeah. want to go and actually have some, some good Reddit some, shit. Yeah. Solved it? That's some good shit to put y'all on. You should wash your dishes. Solved it. Wash, wash, your, your, dishes. wash your dishes. Wash your yeah. goddamn dishes. Don't let a bunch of ants get whatever little and sugar particles are If you're not going to wash your dishes, be as mad about it as that guy. Yeah. <laughs> be as funny and be mad as about it as that guy. as possible, yeah. Yeah, for sure. This one's great. Okay. Am I the asshole for telling my 14-year-old daughter that she's average looking? Uh, 
I, I'm gonna joke. I don't even want to jokingly say no. I don't even. I just feel like this is just sad. <laughs> Yeah, this one's pretty sad. Yeah. I, female 39, have a very insecure daughter, female 14, so I told her that she's average looking. Joking. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> that solved the problem. So that solved her insecurities. Yeah. Uh, who has a depressingly... Okay, I'll read. I'll start from the beginning. Yeah, start from the top, yeah. I, female 39, have a very insecure daughter, female 14, who has a depressingly unhealthy obsession with her looks. She often avoids mirrors and pictures because her mood instantly drains when she sees herself. Hmm. She ta- constantly asks her father and me if we think she's pretty, and we always tell her the same thing, that she's a beautiful girl inside and out. As I understand how most teenage girls are with their body image, as I was one at, at some point myself, my daughter's vanity is not only becoming exhausting to those around her, but I fear is it's it causing her to slowly lose herself. Vanity? Is that... Is that the right word for that? I don't know, because I feel like... I think she has a very... Insecurity. Insecurity, I think, is a better... Yeah. Yeah. Which is also, like, not her fault. It's definitely, like, a societal thing, but, like... It, well, you'll see there's a reason okay. for it. Um, yesterday, I decided to sit her down to chat with her about this to discuss what's bothering her and see if she's willing to visit a therapist. She told me she didn't want to talk about it, but as her mother, of course, I'm going to be worried about her, so I insisted. She finally agreed. A few minutes into this conversation, she asked exactly, exactly this. Mom, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugarcoating. The kids at my school think I'm ugly and oh. say I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Oh, fuck, man. So she's being bullied. That's why she has this just by, Yeah, just for having a big nose. That sucks. <laughs> Fucking dog. Same, yeah. No, yeah, Jesus. I used to hang out with girls um, that, you know, we were like similar body shape or whatever. People... I don't know. People always thought, like, since I had friends that were girls that were white and also had brown hair, that we were like sisters or like looked oh, the same yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm. But um, they would say, like, which one is Sarah or which one is like um, Greta? I'm just using a random name. And then they'd be like, oh, Sarah's the one with the big nose. Jesus. <laughs> This is funny as fuck Damn. now. Yeah, I, I mean, love my so, nose. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't change it's it for the like, world. Yeah, it's not like you shouldn't be bullied for something you have no control over, obviously. But like, yeah. Also, that motherfucker is straight. That is a straight motherfucker. Yeah. That is a good fucking profile. Not gonna lie. Yeah. High key. They just jealous. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> jelly just nose. Jelly on my nose. Uh, do you really think I'm beautiful, or are you just lying? I'm an honest person. So you're oh god oh so I'm god. a piece of shit <laughs> yeah is what that actually yeah. is. <laughs> just being honest bro yeah so I gave her the most honest answer I had I told her she was average looking like most people in the world are don't you don't tell that to your <laughs> fucking daughter though that's being bullied that's yeah it's being completely bullied by a bunch of assholes mm-hmm. and that it's not a bad thing to have an average appearance she immediately that's g- not what she wants to hear though like. Right, just because someone, I'm just being on, I don't tell them what they want to hear. Just because someone says be honest, that's not. Oh God, I God, you have no fucking man. I have bad social fucking cues, and I even I know that's like you know you still gotta be like nice about it. Like you at least you can't. Especially be, if someone's going through something as serious as this bullying. Yeah, like yeah. Well, and it could lead to you know EDs. It could eat, disorders like yeah, yeah. self harm. Like yeah, it's a it's a very delicate situation. And you're her depression parent. Yeah, for sure. You're her goddamn parent. You don't you can't drop this ball. Listen, I'm not a parent. I don't know what to I'm do not a parent. in I'm these th- situations. I know not to do that. Yeah, not not this. That, not this, this seems not the right scenario. thing to do. Yeah, just from my just general in, impulses. Um, she immediately got up and left without saying a word, and just went into her room for the rest of the night. Today she has been cold and distant, and I think I upset her, which wasn't my you intention think? at all. You think. You think he's upset. Yeah. Am I the asshole? Yes. Am I? Am I? And, and people who use the excuse of, like, honesty are, like, are such fucking it's dicks. so funny to me. Always, always asshole. Like, yeah. Just like, the, yeah, dog. God. And, uh, man, that's so fucked. It's so interesting, these conversations, because, like, I don't remember how my mom used to talk to me about it. I feel like she was sometimes, like, I feel like my mom was very, like, I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong thing because high key, I just don't remember. And honestly, I don't want to imply that it was anything worse than it was. But it was just weird. Like, no, I get you. My mom, she said that she, her mom, when she was growing up, 
my mom was very upset about being fat because mm. everyone in my family is fat mm. like every single human yeah, person yeah and um my mom was worried about it and you know and she would be really self-conscious about her weight and my grandma would be who was more of like a english lit person she was very like into the arts and things like that she was like well if you lived in like you know 1800s europe you would be revered for your body type because you know larger yeah. women were more revered because they were that was a sign of wealth know, whatever. right like yeah. was, that was her way of trying to help my mom get through that and my mom just took it as like confirmation that she's fat because my mom wanted uh, to hear no i'm not fat because fat equals ugly yeah and so growing up, I never, I don't think I ever really was like, am I fat? Maybe I was. I don't really honestly remember. Mm. But I think my mom, I think she tried not to do that because she wanted her mom to just help her with her weight. Mm. So I think it was more just like, you know, you are fat, but we can work on it was oh, the way okay. my mom dealt with it. But then she would also be like, like call me sexy and shit, which is weird. Very a little weird. But yeah. like, if older men would look at me and you know whatever, she'd be like, "That means you're attractive." <laughs> it's a good thing they're looking at you. And now I'm like, well, no. What a what a, what a mishandling of this situation. Yeah, I get what and you mean. I don't know. Maybe a lot of women don't know how to handle that. Mm. Maybe yeah. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And um, I don't know. I think if I just you know. If I had a kid, I would be like, it's important that you feel comfortable in your body. Yeah, I agree with that. And yeah, you fuck be those kids. And fuck those kids. <laughs> you should be supporting yeah. uh, from an anti-bullying like perspective. Yeah, like, exactly. That's the real issue here. The, is... the issue is the bullying here. Yes, yeah. It's the... And you should tell... Your nose fucking... is beautiful. Everything about you is beautiful. Fuck those people. You're yeah. going to grow up. You're going to look different. They're going to look different. Nothing about your body is going to be... Is permanent. Yeah, you're and going. You're, you're beautiful right now, and you're beautiful n now on as well. Yeah, exactly. There's a way around. Yeah, there's not. But also, you're 14. It's not. You don't have to be beautiful. Yeah, it's weird to even. Uh, yeah, you don't like, have to even worry about that. Exactly. Yeah, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be worrying about what other people think about you at the teenage years. Yeah, but I understand why. Yeah, it sucks, man. Fucking society. It mm -hmm. sucks. God, man. I don't know. Did you have any bullying growing up? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it was ever. It might have been about looks because I definitely got called the F slur once. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had long hair. This was in middle school, and it was like not. It wasn't a great middle school. Mm. It was definitely like uh, you know, it was very. I mean, also because like middle school, because I always had like long hair and shit. And I used to have like when I was a fifth grader, I had uh these multicolor like round glasses, like Harry Potter glasses. Oh yeah, and I definitely got shit for that too, and having long hair because I was definitely not the typical male presenting like mm. short hair, fucking does sports, buzz cut. Yeah, like yeah, I was definitely like whatever was was up the pink salmon shorts and the polo shirt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it was very much like yeah, I was definitely not uh around. Like I, I think like yeah, I think I, I don't I don't know if I would say I got bullied for my looks mm. i don't remember right now if i'm being honest mm. but it was definitely not i was definitely like were you ever insecure about your look because you don't need sometimes. to be bullied to be insecure yeah, I think about I was sometimes look. insecure yeah about how i looked i, I, I definitely yeah. thought i wasn't attractive for a little bit of oh my, yeah yeah for sure i felt that too like a lot and i think definitely it was about my weight because my mom was always trying to lose weight and i was always trying to lose weird, weight I, yeah i have a thing about my chin I really? Think, yeah, I think I don't have that pronounced of a chin. Because I remember I used to have a, a I had one friend, and I don't think this isn't his fault, but it's like definitely like a, a joke. Was like uh, I because I, I used to do I did a show uh, basically like since my name's Chinland. Yeah, there's a joke that like I come from like a land of chins, like Chinland. Oh, chin land. Oh, yeah, because okay. that's how some people pronounce it. But the joke was I had the weakest of the chins. <laughs> Wow, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's you know, it's not great. <laughs> I gotta be honest. As a person who has been physically intimate with you, yeah, um, you, you got a chin because it <laughs> digs into me sometimes, and I'm like this motherfucker with his pointy ass chin. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah, you, I appreciate it. You but yeah, definitely I, that, that, have a that was something that, that that was one thing that I think I've carried on. I think was a minor insecurity about my chin. Damn. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any other insecurities other than Bummer. my nose, but that lasted like a month. 
I feel that, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a uh, shit that you can't control. I mean, my arms, I guess, because I got a lot of fat there. But say, it's all yeah, fat my, related, you know. Yeah, like and I feel like my arms, like you know, I like wearing longer stuff because it hides my. Same, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'll wear like shit like that. I never did when I was a kid. I never wore yeah. shit that showed off my arms. I, that's why I want to go back to the gym to get the arms. Get the arms. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I feel know. that. Feel you. Solved it. Okay. Yeah. This one's a little. All right. Let's do this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I the asshole for not letting a woman change her baby's diaper on the counter where I was eating lunch? Okay. Maybe not, because, Maybe. I mean, I would probably be like, don't do that. Decided to stop in at a casual neighborhood restaurant on my way home from the gym around 2 p.m. Mm. It's a smallish place with a counter where you can order sandwiches, smoothies, acai bowls, and salads to take away or eat it. Acai bowls? Acai bowls, sorry. I don't know how to say things. I can't read. No, I think that I think acai in my brain, too, when I read it. Yeah, I feel you. So acai yeah. bowls, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Acai. Acai bowls. Okay. It's a small-ish place with a counter where you can order sandwiches, smoothies, acai bowls, and salads to take away or eat it. Mm. There are five tables and a counter with three stools in the front section and another counter and two tables in the back. Okay. When I got there, everything up front was occupied, so I ordered and went and sat at the counter in the back. Other than me, there were two women at one of the tables. They brought my food over a few minutes later. Not long after that, a woman who'd been at a table from the up front came to the back carrying a big cloth bag and a baby. She put the bag on the counter right next to me, then spread out some kind of mat. It hit me when she was planning to do, so I said very politely, if you need to change the baby, there's a restroom right behind you. She said, yes, I know, but there's no changing table, and I don't want to put the mat on the floor. It'll get dirty. My response was, please do not change your baby's diaper on the counter where I'm eating lunch. Again, still being polite. I think that's fair. I think it's a that's, little bit fair. I think fair. I think it sucks that there's no. Uh, yeah, I think uh, they should have. They should a have fucking... a changing table in the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. She launched into a. It's a baby. Do you expect her to stay in a wet diaper because you don't like where I change her, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And I Ooh. said, Ooh, I don't... find somewhere else uh, yeah. to do it. Not. I'm not saying don't change your baby's diaper. It's not in front of me while right I'm eating. Next to me, yeah. And I said, I don't want to look at or smell this while I'm eating. You have a table in the front. Change her there if you don't want to use the restroom to do it. Yeah. Why are you not changing it at the table? Is it because you also don't want to inconvenience the people you're eating with? Yeah. So she got really worked up then saying anyone could see inside the front of the restaurant from the street. And how could I do that to a baby? And so on. I finally went to the front counter, asked the staff to deal with her and waited while they did. She ended up storming out, threatening to, quote, write it all up on next door which is an absolute cesspit of finger pointing and gossip if you aren't aware of it. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. And never go to that restaurant again. And I went back and finished my lunch. So am I the asshole for not letting no. someone change a dirty diaper on the surface where I was eating my lunch in a restaurant? No, it's the restaurant's fault for not having a changing table. Yeah. I mean, I'm absolutely mortified if my dog decides to poo near a picnic. We have a leash-free dog park and it's amazing how many people like to picnic there. Yeah. Like, it's the dog's toilet. So I <laughs> don't think I am, but I want to check. Okay, well, I mean, uh, the leash-free thing, I don't know. I feel weird about leash-free dogs. Yeah, it's always a little weird. But that's not even related to the story, I it's guess. It's not. Like it's... I mean, it's, like, kind of similar, I guess. Yeah. Entitlement. I don't know. Fucking, I think multiple things. Like, Jesus Christ, the lady should not have done that. Yeah. I think it's weird to start an argument when someone's like, I, w I want to eat, I want to look at baby poop, poop and pee. Yeah, right next to me. That's like, valid, right? Yeah, and I don't even think, I don't I know. I don't know. Parents, what do you do? Because we're not parents. Yeah. So is it normal to change a baby on the ground if there's no... Or, like, next to a sink? I don't know, because it's weird, because I feel like a lot of places have... Or have those. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't I've know what been the law in is. places where there aren't, so... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. It's just weird. Yeah, I don't know if you would just, like... What do you do I mean, when I guess you don't the, have I one? guess the polite thing is just move table if someone does that right next to you, but it feels like it's the onus is put on have you. To. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. yeah. I think, I, I mean, is it up to the lady to go and find one? Also, is it like, I feel like it's really unsanitary yeah, for, for the just restaurant, restaurant yeah. to just put a bunch of baby shit and make it like, I don't know, it's weird. That's very... Do you do it in your car? I don't know. 
Like, what do you do? I think the restaurant's the shittiest thing here. I think, yeah, they should have at least a changing table. I think mo- every everywhere yeah, should have a changing table. At the very least. But also, I've never owned a restaurant, so I don't know what the deal is with what putting you- a changing table in your restaurant bathroom. I don't know. Yeah. So, I don't know. This one's difficult for me to decide because I don't know. I would say not the asshole. I don't think you're an asshole. For I don't just think necessi- I think the other person's a little bit entitled, I think, with the... Yeah. The next door reviewing, like... Yeah, that's weird. as a threat, yeah. The, the way that she handled it was not great. But also, I don't... I don't know. It's Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, do you I just change just, your baby in the uh, on the floor? Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. I don't know either. I tell don't know it, either. Tell us, tell us in the comments. Below, yeah. Parents, you can now decide. Parents decide. If you're the... Uh, if this person's <laughs> the asshole or not. Yeah. Solved it? Solved it. Yeah. Got it. I think a simple one. You know, it's a nice simple one about baby poop. Baby poop. That's why. I, that's why I picked it. I was like, "Ooh, poop, poopy funnies." <laughs> I think it's really funny that she went immediately to what you want him to sit in his own piss and shit. Yeah, it's like, like no, I didn't say that. I just wanted to eat. I just wanted to vibe. I wanted to vibe and eat and sit down and eat. Yeah. Okay. This one's from r slash entitled bitch. Ooh, I've never heard of this one. Okay. Yeah, but it's an am I the asshole that was screenshot and posted to entitled bitch. Okay. I don't know if she's a bitch. I just think she's uninformed. Okay. TBH. Fascinating. Okay. Am I the asshole for confronting a neighbor who was rude to my son at trick or treat because of a rule I'd never heard of? Mm. I, 27 female, took my four year old son trick or treating on Halloween as normal parents do. He was so adorable in his costume and his joy was infectious. We went along, house after house, lots of smiles, exclamations of how cute he was, and of course, loads of candy. When we came to one house, we rang the bell. Initially, there was no answer. It was one time that she rang the bell. Okay. We're going to count. Okay. We got, We're all going to count uh, let's together. Let's all count together. Yeah. Okay. We got one. So we rang the bell. Initially, there was no answer, but I could see there were lights on in the house, and so clearly people were home. Uh, okay, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily... Want to participate in Halloween. Uh, we'll address that. Um, also, I heard shuffling behind the door. Clearly, they were looking through the peephole to see who was there. I rang again. This is now number two. That's kind of... Are they at the peephole and you're ringing? Yeah. That's kind of fucked up, because what if there are things right next to them? I feel like in our, in our apartment, the, the alarm the, yeah. is right next to the door, and I always get freaked out if I'm standing right next to it, because I feel like it'd be too loud of a thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know this lady's not thinking about that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, she's definitely not thinking about other people. It's like candy. I want candy. Then after two more minutes, I rang a third time. Just give up. You're already wasted like five <laughs> minutes. Give up. Go to another house. Three times. You should have, there, there should be a hint here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry. The- like, it's not. Oh, God. Jesus. Now, the woman opened the door with a nasty look. And before my son could even say trick or treat, she pointed to her porch light and rudely said, porch light off means don't ring here and started to close the door the look on my little boy's face was so heartbreaking i could not let that nastiness slide plus i had never heard of such a rule and told her so and asked how could she break a little boy's heart like that the repeat they repeated the rule and said she didn't have any candy anyway and to please leave her alone i asked what kind of idiot doesn't make sure to have some bare minimum candy uh what Around on October 31st. Like, That's... Like, use a damn calendar. Oh, my God. That's a little... That's a little harsh. Listen. Listen, if she's being harsh, you're also being harsh right now. Like, for sure. Like, yeah. I, the escalation, man. Uh, yeah, you're now escalating of, like, you're a fucking moron because you don't have candy. Like, some people don't celebrate Halloween. It's fine. Candy's also expensive. Candy's also really expensive. Yeah, like if you don't have the money. I usually forget until halfway into October to buy some candy, and then I'm like, "Fuck!" Oh, and yeah. it's like fifty fucking dollars. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, and then no one shows up in my house anyway, and I eat all the candy. Yeah, uh, but whatever. She said, "Not Ellie. Not everyone wants to be part of Halloween," and slammed the door in my face. I confronted. I comforted my poor son, explained some people are just terrible Grinches. What? And we moved on to a few more houses, but the night was ruined. It got worse. I I mean, you kind of ruined it, though, yourself. (laughs) I'm sorry I'm making fun of her so much with my tone, but... But I mean, like, she is like... You kind of ruined the night for yourself. A little bit. Yeah. I feel like after the second ring, I would have stopped. 
and, and been like, at oh, least I'm that. sorry. At most and after. And then left. Yeah. yeah. We got worse. I got back home and saw my phone had insane notifications. Apparently, this woman uh, had recorded the whole interaction on her door camera and posted it to a local neighborhood Facebook group. Oh, my God. Anyway, the backlash was so bad, I had to leave the group and I'm still receiving uh, horrible DMs. Apparently, the porch light rule is real. It's a way to signal you're opting out of Halloween. Parentheses. Who the fuck wants to opt out of Halloween? Okay, well, hold on. That's, yeah, okay. that's a little weird. Even my husband won't back me up. He knew the rule, and while he's sympathetic to the social media abuse I'm getting, he said it was stupid of me to engage when she clearly didn't want to participate. I'm upset he thinks I should have let rudeness against our little boy slide. Am I that, the asshole but, uh, uh, for uh, confronting uh, this rude woman? Well, uh, uh, um, okay, listen, okay. So someone said the porch light rule, they're 40 years old, and the porch light rule was a thing when they were a child. And yet, same for me. It was for me, too. I very, I remember very... I'm not 40, but it was I mean, a yeah, thing. Yeah, I remember that being a thing, too. Yeah. I thought that was... And, like, I was... And we were talking about it earlier, too. Because I was like, is this a thing that just some people don't know? Maybe. I mean, it, 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 listen, if you're just not, not informed, great. But I feel like you did escalate. I I don't know, because I really do kind of feel like after the second ring... Yeah. You should have gotten it. Or even when, you know, she comes out and goes, hey, don't, don't do this. Don't. This is what the rule means. I would be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And like, I would leave. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like... That's what I would do. Not be like you're a fucking bitch for not having for not giving candy. me candy. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know, like, yeah, and like, I don't know. It sucks that your son's now sad because of it, but also like you kind of put him in that situation by doing that, and also yeah. you can't calm your son down, not even a little bit. Yeah, like you could have taught. Yeah, I mean, I know kids are unruly or whatever, but like, you know, that's a good time to teach them about like disappointments or yeah, and like I don't things know, not perfectly going to plan and how to regulate emotions and stuff. Yeah, I there's feel a like. learning opportunity here, not not fucking... just like a she ruined our whole night, and other people are the reason that you're sad. <laughs> yeah. And there's no way to deal with like, it. Like, I don't know. It's very. Like, that's going to fuck that kid up for sure. Yeah. And also, like, the. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm just like, it's pretty terrible. I don't know. And, like, yeah, you shouldn't be giving, like, you know, like, fucking no. death threats on social media. I don't I, know I why don't, the fuck. She didn't say death threats. But not. not uh, I know. But, like, I know it's not death threats. But I mean, like, like harassment. Uh, harassment. You shouldn't be harassed. No. And she shouldn't have posted that on fucking. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's also, uh, I feel a little bit like this lady thought she could just berate this woman, and this woman has video evidence of it and put it up. Yeah, it's like this lady's I got, fucking I just crazy. Don't know if I approve of that. I guess like just putting it up on the internet. Listen, you know me. I'm a little bit like talk shit, get hit. You know I what mean, I mean? Yeah, and I, yeah. There's only so much I can say. I mean, this is the whole point of this fucking show. But like, yeah. Ah, uh, God, it's it, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I mean, I think it's just like if you're out and about and you have an instance with a stranger. You don't know what they're going to do. That's fair, yeah. Like, not enough people have that awareness. They think they can just bully people in real life. And then those people turn around. Like, you know the guy that yeah. shot the guy in the belly? The YouTuber? Yeah. Who was, like, harassing him? Mm. It's not good that he shot a man. But, like, come on! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you should always be wondering if the person over there has a gun. <laughs> You should always be like, if I go up there and I scream at this guy in his face and I harass him, he might that's true. Yeah. shoot me with a gun. Yeah, and I understand that too. Yeah, this this person was very clearly harassing. Like, you should have more stranger and, danger. I think more people should be worried about stranger danger in real life, I, I, I think. I get what you mean, yeah. A little okay. bit. That's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. 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 Damn, that's just... Like, not like cowering, you know, I'm scared of all human life. But, like, just don't fuck with people. Yeah, I get what you mean. You know? Damn. That's wild, man. Yeah. Damn. Solved it. Fuck that. Well, that was a weak high five. There we go. No, yeah. Right. There you go. Good high five. Yeah, that's a rule, right? That's a rule. That's a rule. Oh, another thing that I wanted to say real quick. I'll put my phone away. I'm sorry. <laughs> a police officer in the comments said that they go around specifically on Halloween to tell sexual uh, people on the sexual assault offenders list, make sure that they don't have their lights on and that they don't have any Halloween decorations. That makes sense. So they were like, "You could, if you're just going up to every fucking house, you might get a sex offender." Yeah, that is true, huh? 
I never thought about that. That's wild. But yeah, they make sure to go up and tell them, like, don't, you're don't not do allowed. That. Yeah, that's fair. You're not allowed to participate in Halloween. Never would have even thought that's about it. That's a good idea. That's, yeah. God. Fucking crazy, man. Yeah, dude. Damn, that's good. All right. Am I wrong for trying to provide for my family? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Wow, Real quick. Get, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. How fucking dare you? <laughs> He's trying to provide for his family. I'm just hedging my bets, dude. Okay. All right. Let's see how that plays out. I've been in the casino too long. I know I've been counting cards. You know what I mean? I, 32 male, have recently had a second child with my wife, 26 female, of five years. Mm. Before we got married, we had agreed that I would be the one who works and she would be the one who just stay at, stays at home and looks after the kids. But just before our youngest was born... I got laid off from my job because a lady at work hated me and lied about sexual harassment to get me fired, which made my wife very, very angry. She has a decent amount of money in her savings, so she started started paying for her own the rent, groceries, etc. Oh my god! Well, I looked for a new job, but she wouldn't stop lashing out at me for being a quote jobless bum, which really hurt because I was trying so hard to get a new job. So I'm sus. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Wife is believing the wife believes the sexual harassment. And yeah, I mean, listen, I don't, I really don't believe someone would just lie about sexual harassment. I, I know that, it happens. I know it happens, but I think it's not a big percentage of people that would just go and do that. Yeah, it's a very, especially very, when you got to report it to a company because usually they don't. Oh yeah, protect report, you. Yeah, they usually don't. Yeah, yeah. If you get fired because of it. That's you probably That's, come on. You yeah. Pres, yeah. But OK. Sure. She lied. Whatever. OK. Now, I've always loved gaming. So when my friend told me about how I could make money doing carry services in Destiny, I instantly started doing it with my buddy and we actually managed to start making money just a short while after starting. OK. We'd make around one hundred and eighty dollars every weekend and about one hundred dollars during the week, which we'd split. My wife doesn't really understand how I'm making money off of gaming and is always saying it's not sustainable and I should be helping out with the kids and looking for a real job. Even though I've told her a million times, my buddy and I are getting more and more customers every week and we're eventually going to hire more people and start an actual business. Now, this is where it all goes to shit. This one weekend, I had a lot of customers lined up and was going to make a bunch of money. Then my wife comes in and says she needs me to watch the kids that weekend because she has to go visit her aunt, aunt who's sick and in, in, in the hospital. I told her I could watch them, but that I needed to be at my computer pretty much all day, so I'd have to move the crib from the nursery into the office to watch the baby and our oldest in there, and she just blew up at me. It was crazy. She was just screaming all these terrible things at me and crying and telling me she needed to go. I kept trying to calm her down, but she was having none of it. Before I knew it, she had backpacked and had called her mother to come pick her and the kids up. I tried to reason with her, but she left and hasn't been home for two days. I'm writing this crying alone in the house, missing my wife terribly, wondering where I went wrong. What can I do to repair this? Wow. Is this on Am I the Ex? No, this is on Am I the Devil. Oh, okay. I think this is an ex just waiting to happen, though. Yeah, for sure. A, I lot, don't, a lot I happened don't, here. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are like five elements in this, this one. Is, I'm like a little devil of this show. You, you know what really I mean? Are. I'm a little rampscallion. We should have dressed up for Halloween and you would have been like just a little devil. I'd be a little devil. Yeah, I just have a little devil horns. <laughs> and just like a little sign that says like, am I? Am I? Yeah. Am I the devil? Um, um, where do you want to start with the sexual harassment or the making only $200 a week? $240 a week, but cut in half. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So it's 120 and somehow he thinks this is going to be a business where he hires more people. The first thing he's thinking about doing is hiring more people and splitting his money more. Even more, yeah. Which, I mean, you know, you can make money... But we would be hypocrites if we said you're not allowed to make a business and you need a real yeah, job. You can make a business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. However, for you, a family of, of four? Like four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. You got to figure like we still worked when we were starting this business, you know? Yeah. Because we Even have to you, pay bills and you have yeah. to help people. 
And for a while, this is only like just extra money. Yeah. On the on the. And that was like for years. <laughs> yeah, like two years of just like, oh, we got an extra three hundred bucks this month. That's you, nice. You can't just like quit your job when you have a wife and two kids and then just start a business where you play destiny and carry things for people i think I, I is don't that what that, that is i don't know i don't know what that or is Or is it just being really good at destiny and helping them through stuff like you carry the team maybe that might be it but like literally though like that's still not sustainable it really isn't that sustainable i mean i don't know about it so i don't know how sustainable it is i know that the money that he's saying that he makes is not enough to support a family of four. Yeah. It's not. It's even, you could get a part-time job and Best make more money than scenario, that. Best case scenario, yeah, is a thousand bucks a month. Not even. Not more, even, Less yeah. than half of that. Yeah, so 500 a month. <laughs> That's ins- and then also think about, you gotta think about taxes, 20% out of taxes. Yeah. Because if this is gonna be, you're self-employed, you have to pay your own taxes. You're not thinking about healthcare. You're not thinking about if you have to take a day off. Yeah, like, and you have a family you have to take care of on top With of that. kids who might get sick. Yeah. And it, what if your wife is in the hospital? And you had a literal emergency happen with your fucking wife's aunt, like, fucking... Yeah. In the hospital. Yes. She needs to go see your aunt. And she needs help. And, and you're not able to help her because you have to... You're yeah, starting this new business. Those are things you have to think about when you start a business like this. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna make this, like, your job, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of risk with it. And the risk was too much this time. Yeah, for and sure. It's not going to work out the one day. Yeah. God, that's wild, man. Well, it was pretty wild. And that's not even the sexual harassment. The sexual fired. harassment part already is like you got fired for something that was your own fault for sure. Yeah. I'm like just going to say it was your own it fault. It was your own fault. Yeah. Um, and if people are like, but he said she lied. <laughs> it's an unreliable narrator. Listen, I'm you can't t- believe I'm, you what can't he's believe saying him, yeah. in the story. Exactly. I'm sorry. And also, like, yeah, I really, I don't know. I remember working in a place where someone was definitely getting, like, harassed, you know, and oh, yeah. they did not fire the other person. I mm-hmm. think there's a certain point where it gets so much and it's so obvious that they have to fire you someone. Ha- legally. Yeah. For, for legal reasons. Yeah. I was a victim of harassment. They didn't even put me in a different spot than the other person. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I had to go to them and be like, guys, why do you keep putting me in the same spot with this guy who is harassing me? And uh, then they had to be like, oh, fuck, you're right. And then <laughs> move me to the other side of the fucking airport. Yeah. Because like, yeah, it's, it's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Like, it's fuck. just, yeah, insane. The, the lengths that companies will go to to protect harassment harassers yeah is insanity couldn't be fucked to pay for someone else to get trained sorry yeah don't it's don't got too that much money. yeah oh uh, here's an extra bonus for the ceo for making really smart and good decisions <laughs> yeah exactly well, we don't have any money to pay to hire a new person yeah no you just have to deal with harassment yeah, you while deal you're with working. sorry not my problem i'm only the manager <laughs> i'm only the manager ridiculous man solved it what an idiot what a dumbass what yeah a, what a just a da- a dumb idiot Sometimes you could be so stupid that you're an asshole. Yeah. Yes. I agree with that. Yeah. Or this is rage bait, which I guess now we have to say. It could be rage bait, but also, I could believe it. Yeah. I could definitely believe it. I could believe it for sure. Some guy is this stupid. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? For sure. Yeah. God damn. God, so much shit. Damn. <laughs> it was a lot. That there was, was a lot. lot. There was a lot there. Yeah. Okay. I hope that gets stitched. <laughs> I'm going to add them in the tag. This would never happen. Men are not like this. Okay, this one is crazy to me. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. My boyfriend, 33 male, told me, 37 female, he isn't attracted to me sometimes. Okay, sometimes is doing a lot of legwork on that. My boyfriend of nearly a year is an avid gym goer. I've always worked out, but when we started dating, he shared with me his lifts, and I've since made a lot of progress. I am lifting heavier and more consistent than ever and seeing results. Okay, that's good. That's Yeah, you're working out. Great. Yeah, that's nice. Side note, when we first started dating, he often had a problem finishing during sex. We talked about it, and he confessed he watched a lot of internet porn and was taking care of himself out of habit. 
Since then, he has quit completely watching porn and masturbating. Oh, wow. Yet his sex drive is still not there. This has always messed with me. I miss being lusted and wanted. That sucks. I told him that sometimes I feel like we are just friends because he doesn't make moves, etc. I felt like he's not attracted to me and he ended up writing a whole novel in his notes app uh, on telling me it's maybe because he notices parts of my body that I need to tighten up. Whoa, what? So that's probably why I can sense he isn't attracted to me sometimes. Oh my god. A whole fucking, like, notes app fucking... To be like, yeah, sometimes I notice your thighs or your this or this whatever is not... Oh my god. And you're probably... Fi- you're going <laughs> to the fucking gym already. I like, know. who fucking... Oh my god. You shouldn't... You gotta break up. You gotta break <laughs> up. I'm, I'm just... I'm he- you know, so- I'm hedging that bet right now. Yeah. yeah, I think you need to break up, probably. I feel like a hideous ogre now, worse than ever. It is already messing with me that he has no drive. Is this normal, or is his mind so war- warped from porn that he can't enjoy a natural woman? I'm an attractive woman that invests a lot in self-care and take pride in looking good. I've always struggled with body image, and hearing this completely broke me last night, and I can't see myself marrying someone who thinks this way about me. Oh yeah, you can't marry this guy, no. (laughs) Or anyone in general. He was crying too and upset because he wasn't... Okay, I'm sorry. He was crying and upset because he didn't want to hurt me, but wanted to share. He said he is attracted to me, but he notices the bloat. Oh, fuck you. And I just need to tighten up and be stricter with my diet. I cried so much last night, I felt punch drunk. He wants to be with me and wants to see me Sunday, but I am traumatized. This makes me not want to eat, change in front of him, or let him see my body anymore. Yeah, because you're just going to get fucking nitpicked. Yep. Uh, Am I just being triggered, or is this a red flag? Too long didn't read. My boyfriend notices parts of my body that need to be tightened up and said this might be why I can't sense, why, why, why I can sense he isn't attracted to me. Um, yeah, no, you need to break up. You're just gonna have someone criticize everything. You're already going Dude, to the fucking gym. Listen, yo, if you start bulking, what the fuck's he gonna do then? Like, yeah, like if you want to bulk so you can do better lifts and carry more shit. What if you have a baby? Yeah, if you what have if a baby, you get oh. married and have a baby? What if you go through menopause? Hey, babe, I know you're pregnant, but that belly needs to get tightened. You need up. to get tightened up, man. You gotta get tightened up on you the belly. You just gotta get tightened up, dog. You gotta bring the podcast in, <laughs> and you gotta get tightened up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's so fucked up, man. Like, yeah. these guys that do this, where they're like, yeah, you just gotta lose 20 pounds and then I'll be sexually attracted to you again. It's always a control thing. Yeah, it's a control thing, and it's never gonna be enough to satisfy that person because they no. just need more control. They're gonna. And if you were someone who would shut that shit down and would be like, yeah, we're not dating then, they would shut the fuck up. They would absolutely shut the fuck up. They don't actually believe it. He never stopped watching porn, he's never stopped jerking off. He continues to do that. He's just trying to control you. Yeah. Like, I've never... When I was on Tinder, Mm -hmm. the amount of men that were on there that were like, no fat chicks that I matched with was constant. And you know, if I had decided to date any of them, I never went on a single date with any of them. Oh, no, yeah. Because what a red flag that is. Yeah. But I was just like, let me fucking see if you're a hypocrite or not. Yes, you are. Okay, moving Boom. on. Boom. Score. Got him. Um, fucking, they would be like, yeah, you just gotta lose 50 pounds to be with me. Uh, never. Yeah, walk away. No yeah. human person has ever said that to me. I think the closest has been a guy that I dated right before you was like, we should go to the gym together. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. But even then, I can't even, tell if that was like, like a, he was disgusted <laughs> by my weight. Or if or it's, not. Yeah, I feel you, yeah. Which I, I don't know, I doubt. I feel you. And I know that we like, had a lot of sex. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. Yeah. I will say, yeah. And I do definitely, and I, I, I do worry about that sometimes because I do know that I like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to, and I do ask you if you want to go. I'm trying to, I don't want to pressure you to no, go. No, you, you don't know? pressure me into going to the yeah, gym. Yeah, I know yeah. that you like it because it's something that you just enjoy. Yeah. So, yeah. You're a more athletic person than I am, for sure. But yeah, no. So I really like, yeah, I definitely, yeah, it's really. Every man is is a, a fucking hypocrite if they say like no fat chicks. You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, I think for sure. I mean, I don't know. If that really is your thing. Then you wouldn't be with women that you think need to change. You yeah, know what I, I mean? You, yeah, I think it's I, just if you're someone, and it doesn't even matter if you actually are fat or not. Men that are into controlling you are going to use it as a tool because they want to 
undermine your insecurity yeah, and, like, and your like, confidence. You know, fat phobia and stuff too, like being so ingrained in society. Like, yeah, it's like they may be a fat phobe for real, but they also might just be using fat phobia to control and a then, woman. And it seems, and then which is really shitty because then it seems like quote unquote justified if they use like a like if they try to say like oh it's health or oh it's because right. everyone else is doing it. Yeah, right. It's a very easy go to. Mm-hmm. That's very easy to open up and like open the door to other shit that yeah. allows them to control you. So even if you like okay, let's say like someone says you gotta lose twenty pounds, mm-hmm. you do that. They're just gonna find something else. Another twenty pounds. Good. Another now you can pounds. actually lose another twenty pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Or it's even like, oh, you gotta change your hair now. Or it's, oh, you want that sweet, you want to eat dessert, but then you're gonna gain weight again, so maybe you shouldn't do that. You know? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really, it's not a means, there's no end, really. Yeah. It's just a means to control, the ending is the control yeah, that exactly. they have over you. God. Awful. Because what, that doesn't make sense, because if I exist and I've dated men, why have I not heard any of that? mm yeah, you, you can... That doesn't make sense, right? I get what you mean, If yeah. this were a real thing, and a lot of men think this way, why have I never heard of a man say, you need to lose this amount of pounds before I can be attracted to you? Mm-mm. Never once in my life have, has any <laughs> man said that to my face. Yeah, so it's like, shit. Not even on the internet. <laughs> That's crazy. I That's, know! Yeah. But this the amount in, of yeah. skinny women that care about their health and their looks get this constantly, and the difference is they care about their looks. Mm. And so men see that as a way to be like... As a vulnerability, quote-unquote, yeah. yeah, to exploit. Yeah, and Jesus. you know, it's the same thing of like, oh yeah, if a guy uh, messages me or something and is like, oh, I want to date you, and I'm like, sorry, no, I can't, I have a boyfriend. And like, well, you're fat anyway, fat bitch. <laughs> You wanted to date me, though. Yeah, you wanted to date me, yeah. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. It's the same thing. It's not about the fat. Yeah, it's about control, yeah. It's about control and trying to get control back. Damn. That's wild, man. Isn't that insane? That's pretty wild, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's all get ready. Mm -hmm. I don't know which is the worst story I have this week. It might be the $200 one, or it might be this one, so let's see. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any of these. Am I the asshole for expecting my girlfriend to support me while I'm unemployed? I don't don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I lost my job four months ago, and EI doesn't cover my full living expenses. Oh, okay. Like employment income, unemployment income? Yeah, unemployment income, I think. I had to buy a car since mine had 330,000 kilometers on it, and the engine issue wasn't worth fixing. Okay. After that, I had a couple thousand saved, and that has been completely wiped out, and now I'm not able to cover all of my expenses. I asked my girlfriend to help cover my expenses. She has refused because I didn't propose before this. We have been dating for three years and moved in for two. She had told me three dates in she expected to be engaged in about two years of dating and is very unhappy with me because I didn't propose. I'm sure she is the one. I'm just still hesitant about marriage and she has told me she is trying to get over the fact she wasted three years with me. Oh my god. I told her to give me some time and and she has thankfully not pushed it. This was shortly before my work announced they were cutting people and I was let go. Now she says I'm expecting too much from her since I'm not ready for marriage, but expecting her to help me with rent. We have been dating for three years. Doesn't that count for something? A question mark exclamation point. If I was a year in, I understand if it was too early, but we have been together for a long time. But she told it was me it was meaningless because I haven't proposed and she still refuses to help me. As I could just decide I don't want marriage and bail at any time. I could have bailed at any time while dating and still can bail after we get engaged, but I didn't and I won't. We have been serious for a long time. Why is the ring in marriage all that matters? Question mark, exclamation point. I told her since she won't help, it's shown me she isn't serious too and she told me it was fine. We can just end the lease and I can go back to live with family if I can't can't afford rent here. I'm getting interview requests back and did an interview although already, although I don't get it. It's crazy to me she would waste three years over covering a bit more rent and groceries. So, there's comments. Okay. This is a lot, man. This one's a lot. Because I can so, kind of see his point of view, because I'm less inclined for marriage, but she told him. Yeah. And he just hasn't done it. And so, these are comments about expectations made in the beginning of the relationship. Okay, yeah. That is important. 
Thank you to the person that posted this on Am I the Devil. This series of comments about her early boundary setting is really telling, all from original OP. She wouldn't tell me the reason, but she refused to sleep with me until after I asked her to be exclusive. Afterwards, she said she won't sleep with anyone who sees multiple people. Right. She has a habit of doing this kind of thing and being really stubborn. That's not stubborn. That's like, that's, I mean, yeah. That's a, a, a that's monogamous valid. relationship is you don't fuck other people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, not even in the talking stages, because I was someone who was dating multiple people in the talking no, stages. No, I get you, yeah. But, like, I'm STDs, things like that. You don't know if the other person you're fucking is wrapping it up with other people. You don't know what they have. Yeah. Makes sense. I could have asked her to be exclusive and then kept sleeping with other people and she wouldn't know. That's cheating. I though. could get engaged and have her help me pay for rent and then run. She doesn't know. The point is she needs to have faith in me, which she already says she doesn't because of a lack of ring. Yes, I do. It's about when you want to have sex, not some arbitrary commitment to exclusivity. I just, why are you together if you both hate each other? Yeah, no one, yeah, it doesn't seem like a good relationship is being formed here. It sounds like she is very strong, she's very, which is good, Yeah, very clear rules about what she wants in a relationship. She wants someone to, like, do the old, like, we're dating, and then when we're exclusive is when we have sex, and I want to be married within two years. Yeah. Whether or not you agree with it, or your personal opinion doesn't really fucking matter, she said that shit. And she was living with it, and she's leaving. Let this guy go on past a year. Yeah, and he's just like, "But I could lie." <laughs> she wouldn't know. I could lie and commit crime, and she would know. I could be Batman, and she wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, why are you even fucking here? Yeah, you don't like her at that point. Reactions have constant. You're like constantly worried about what she's going to respond with. Like she's some judge, jury, and executioner. And you're just a guy that's fucking up. <laughs> it's like so funny. It's a little funny. Yeah, it's really like, yeah. And also, again, all of this was so clearly said from the beginning. Yeah. And if you're just if she like, she just expected it out of nowhere, I guess I could see kind of what he's talking about. But no, it was it was there. It's there. He, from the beginning. He yeah. knew and he just decided to not. I'm just going to ignore that for a second. Yeah. Because maybe I can go out and sleep with other people and she wouldn't. <laughs> It's like, yeah, but the whole point is that, you know, you're making this decision together. Yeah, exactly. She just wants to be valued, and she wants to live a life where she is a wife, and she yeah. wants to have a husband. Yeah. And that's valid. And if it's not going to work out, she's going to end the fucking lease, and you're on the street. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to say, okay, I want to get married in three years, and then you are with someone for seven years. Yeah, and then and be then, like, you know, whatever. Right, are you gonna marry me yet? No. All right, I'll give you another year. Yeah, no, that's you gotta up. have. Yeah, you gotta and be strong you in feel, your conviction. Yeah, yeah. She's doing it right. She has her convictions and shit. Yeah, yeah. God, that's wild, man. Just fucking, just, uh, <laughs> just marry her, dude. <laughs> just, I mean, I guess if he feels like he is not a guy for marriage, he shouldn't. But also, you shouldn't be in this relationship then, because she's so clearly. Yeah, you just wasted her time. Yeah. Straight up, because you think you'd know better than her. Yeah, I'm a smart man. Like, this guy can't, should not marry can't anyone. Tame this stallion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy thinks he's above women. He should not be marrying women. No, I agree. Yeah. God. Solved it. Solved it. That was bad. That was bad. Yeah, give, mm. give me a good one. Give me a good one. <laughs> you fucking good one. Okay. You gotta make the high fives look good on camera. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for asking my fiance to bring me a glass of Prosecco? Yeah. I told Josh, uh, Josh didn't know what Prosecco was. Yeah, it's like a foot thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I, 20s female, and my fiance, 30s male, were enjoying a Friday night wind down, had dinner, yogurt, and we're sitting down for TV. We're on season seven of 24, my first time watching. I was like, season seven of well, 24 seasons? 24 seasons of what? <laughs> no, it's the TV show 24. Okay, okay. I like the way this person writes. I like, I like her. I okay. like her stuff. All right. I decide to paint my nails pink as we're going out tomorrow and seeing my family. Okay. They haven't seen us since we got engaged last month. I'm in a good mood and feeling happy. After painting one hand, I ask him if he fancies opening a bottle of Prosecco tonight. Well stocked post engagement. He says yes. I ask him if he could bring me a glass too, please. 
Okay. That's where the argument began. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just got engaged, arguing over bringing me a glass of Prosecco. Yeah. No shouting, stomping, etc. Just speaking our minds and then silence before resuming. Generally, we get along great and have very healthy communication. Hell, we managed to compromise on a child-free wedding earlier, uh, easier than this. He wanted children there. I didn't. We settled on a child-free ceremony and kids for the dinner and reception. That's fair. Back to the argument. His perspective. It's weird of me to ask him to bring me things, be it a beverage or a blanket. That what? I- <laughs> it's weird to ask for help. Ever. For anything? <laughs> You're about to be married. This is the line in the sand we're going to draw. There's other legitimate things you can like <laughs> argue just, about. It's just so funny to me. I'm sorry. Whether it's a drink or a blanket. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the good part. Oh, this is the best part already. <laughs> that I'm a grown woman and should do these sorts of things for myself. Doing it what? for me. <laughs> Are you trying to co-opt the language of feminism to make it seem like I don't want to carry your fucking wine glass? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Why are you? It's really good. You're man. a grown ass woman. Shit is really good. Um, doing it for me would be quote unquote simping. Whoa! Uh, what the? <laughs> You just found out you're dating a red pill motherfucker, <laughs> yeah. and it's time to break up. Post engagement. Post engagement. They're gonna get, they're gonna get married, dude. <laughs> Doing it for me would be simping, and asking him to is quote unquote toxic. Bro, it's gay to simp for your wife, <laughs> your soon to be wife. <laughs> you should Stay be a should. simp for your wife. Yeah. It's your wife. That's so fucked. That's so stupid. My perspective, dude. Is he gonna say like, dude, you got fucking like, yo, know, I, I, how do I get Roblox bucks? From- <laughs> From getting you a fucking glass. $19 Fortnite card. Yeah. Who Jesus. Wants it? My perspective. It's a glass of Prosecco and my nails were drying. My love language is acts of service and I make him at least three cups of tea a week. Ah, uh, but that's not that. You're supposed to do that. You're my fucking yeah, wife. because you're the girl. You're a, you're a lady. <laughs> yeah. A, no, you're fine. A simple refusal is fine. His attitude about me asking was, in my opinion, quote unquote, toxic. Yeah. Earlier on in our relationship, I did ask him to get me glasses of water semi-regularly. Oh, you fucking bitch. Oh, bad. I can't believe you would ever ask your boyfriend Harlot. to get you things. <laughs> we had a discussion and he expressed his frustration. I now don't really ask, maybe once a week at most. The last time was in a cafe. For unnecessary context, if you're interested, I wonder if it's how we grew up. He's an only child and claims his mom never asked him to do anything like this for her. He's fiercely independent and can sometimes exist in his own little world. Whereas I have an older sister and we just did as we were told, really. Definitely learned to play host at family gatherings, offering food and drink and just being pleasant. If someone asked for something, quote unquote, like a drink, and you said no, that'd be considered rude. But I digress. I asked for Prosecco, even though my five foot legs do in fact work. Am I the asshole? <laughs> No. No. I mean, you if just, he's so fiercely independent, why is he in a partnership? Yeah. He should be out in the fucking woods. Just vibing. Jerking it by himself. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, that's the like, situation. He wants a maid. Yeah. That's, he just yeah. wants you to do everything for I'm him. I'm not your maid. You're my wife. You. Fucking get, yeah. yeah. Like, that's... It sounds immediately, like, it's just so much like a... This is not a partnership. I do not do things for you. You do things for me, and I'm the man of the house. Whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. That's so weird. I just do. Do you not like her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you not want to do things for her? Yeah, like. What is you don't it? Why help? is it simping? How is that Dude, simping? What a fucking fear! What a fear! You're with someone you love them. You think everything's good. You get to one point, and Someone's then he just turns around and says, "Like, ironically, is really bad." Yeah, and he just starts spewing some Andrew Tate bullshit. Like he went down the Andrew Tate fucking pipeline. At some point when you were not looking and like now, yeah. And now you're just, it's all gone. It's all done. God. Fuck. For any, for any, for any of the, the, the men in the audience. Ooh. This is Josh's man corner. 
Uh, you sound fucking cringe. You sound cringe. If you, if you ever say the word simp IRL to your ironically wife? to your your soon to be wife. You did just say IRL though, as if that isn't cringe. How about can you let me make my gosh dang IRL point, please? Okay, fine. <laughs> shit, go ahead. I I uh, brb, uh, but no, <laughs> lol, lol. No, but L-M-A-O. no. I mean, like, yeah, that's just uh, okay. IRL, okay, it's cringe. Not as simping cringe as is, simping is, is more cringe. Is its own hell of cringe. Yeah, it's another level. Like, come on, that's so fucking. You don't seem cool. Mm. You don't seem lovable. <laughs> You don't like. <laughs> you're so right, though. That is like, true. You don't see. You're not gonna. No one's gonna like you if Men you're are really... some weird little freak. That's like, if I do anything for a woman, that's me simping, dude. And it's so funny. The talking about how they grew up is is actually insightful because it's like, yeah, as a woman, you were socialized to be a host, and as a man, even though he was a single child, to everything a was done for single him. parent. He, everything was done for him and he was he's the most independent selfish ass motherfucker that existed and never helped his single mom yeah like knowing you and your house your mom would be like josh co do this for me yeah i've done stuff for my yeah like constantly yeah like I, when i was living there i would you know like do dishes i would do you know fucking um chores like a normal chores. Ass yeah, person I, do chores. I did my own laundry i did yeah like fucking yeah I don't know, and it's always weird whenever I, like, even with, like, laundry stuff, I always find it weird that, like, there's just Dudes don't even know how to not do it, yeah. And, like, I don't know, and that's, like, the... God, it's just wild to me. It's so crazy. I don't know, if you're a partnership, you should be able to know at least. Not only that, too, but, like, just from a perspective of, like, okay, you want to be self-reliant. Yeah. You want to actually know how to do things. Yeah, you're independent. You should know how to do these things. Yeah. Like the one guy that was like, uh, the financial abuse guy that was like, I've never cleaned my own house. I'm not going to start. That's crazy. Yeah. When you lived alone, what did you have a maid? Like, how does yeah, that like, even what'd work? What did you do? Like, yeah. Jesus. You talk such a big fucking game of being independent, but it seems like you're such a codependent motherfucker. And that's something that's really interesting with the toxic masculinity thing that's happened is like, my dad knew how to sew awesome because he was in the coast guard i've even learned how to sew like a little bit they taught me that in middle school yeah i got lucky too that was like i didn't assign myself to that class but like yeah like i don't know these are skills yeah you should know that like my dad made his own bed and shit all the time with the thing with the quarter where you do the quarter you know that thing i don't know actually so yeah they would it used to be i think i think it's sort of in the u.s military and like things where you would make a bed and you would have to make it so tight you could bounce a quarter off of it oh okay yeah and if it didn't bounce then you didn't make it tight enough basically Damn. but you would do that all the time and he knew how to cook and he knew how to clean hmm. and he knew how to fucking so he did macrame oh shit. he used to have some old macrame things that he would do and it was just like i it was funny because my mom would look at it and be like these are feminine things that people think are feminine yeah. In a gendered binary world. And uh, he just knows how to do it. And to me, that was more masculine than a dude not knowing how to wipe his own ass. Yeah. <laughs> and making women do it for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I thought, yeah. If uh, I don't know. It's such a weird... It's interesting because like, I, I, I don't really believe in like the gender role idea. You know? No, but, same. Like, for people that do, I always find it fascinating because I feel like it's very, like, especially masculinity today seems very often like hypocritical. Hypocritical. It makes no and sense. Dumb. Yeah. Like, like you're whining. You're a whining little prick. Yeah. Who doesn't know how to do anything and needs another person. And the only way to do that is by berating them and for it, knowing how to do that and making sure they know how to do that because they're a fucking woman. And if you resurrected a misogynist, racist, great greatest generation ass motherfucker and he looked at these you know fucking guys that think andrew tate or whatever is the best guy ever they would yeah they would be absolutely yeah. hatred towards and these are and like because like i don't know it's, it's weird to me too because like these are the same people that like the only thing they care about is like their fucking 4090 computer like they know just enough to build a computer but they're mm-hmm. not going to do anything else when it's all the same shit just in different things there's no fucking RGB no, light. I don't want to build a skill. I deserve the amount of money that I get. I deserve the amount of sex that I get. And I deserve just to be, you know, worshipped because I have a penis. Yeah. 
It's stupid. It's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. And it's not even another man that you probably like. Oh, God. I've had so many like these weird, edgy, like neo-Nazi ass guys that Mm. really venerate like men that have gone to Vietnam. Oh, yeah. And shit. And my dad actually was in Vietnam and like did that shit. And I was like, if you talk to my dad, my dad would think you're a lame-o. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just know it. Like, you, you would. You have no, you know nothing other than American propaganda. Yeah. Of, like, fucking, your Creedence Clearwater Revival ass fucking we're in yeah. a helicopter going over. You don't even know it's a fucking anti-war song, you idiot. No, you have no idea. My dad was the, was someone who was like, America won every war until Vietnam. And he was in Vietnam, and everyone was like, "No, we totally won Vietnam." No, blah, we blah, lost blah. that. We, we lost, lost Vietnam. Vietnam. He was like, "Let's yeah. not pretend here. We're all adults. <laughs> <laughs> Come on." But you want to venerate this fake male? I don't know. Hierarchy, I, I guess supremacy, I see, supremacy like, is not real. It's, it's just not really real. Fake. Yeah. God, it's so dumb. Yeah. God, men. Yeah. If you actually had a dad like that, he would look at you and be like, you're a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a, you're if you a, wanted listen, that 50s style fucking dad that worked fucking nine to five. That was in Korea. That was in Korea. He would look at you and be like, you're a fucking disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. You're a, God. It's wild how we <laughs> just, God, it's just wild. Yeah, I don't even know it's what to say. It's insane that there's no male role models like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I it's not you. profitable, I guess, to teach young boys how to sew. No, it's not profitable at all. No, not, not at all. <sighs> it's ridiculous, man. Anyways, I'll do it. Solved it. Am I the asshole for telling my brother-in-law to leave my children alone? My wife and I have three children, and the situation involves our two oldest. Mm. Back when they were young, we had crazy work schedules. On the other hand, her brother has a job and position where he can come and go as he pleases, so he helped with our children. Mm. The three of us took them turns taking the kids to school and picking them up. The kids sometimes stayed with him for a day or two. When they grew older, our work schedule stabilized, so we didn't rely on him as much. However, the kids are incredibly attached to their uncle, to the point where it seems like I'm being replaced. Oh. Once when our daughter ran out of panty liners... She called her uncle to ask him to pick her up some. My wife was at work, but I was working in the yard, and she didn't think to ask me. Oh, my God. A year ago, our son was questioning his sexual identity, and instead of coming to me or his mother, he went to talk to his uncle, and then my brother-in-law told my wife about their conversation. I was the last to know about it. On our daughter's last birthday, she was most excited about his gift because he got her the exact model and color tennis racket she wanted. She didn't take a second look at my present. The last straw happened earlier today when our son was sick at school. Instead of calling me or his mother, he called his uncle. Brother-in-law texted us about the situation and asked my wife to call the school so that he could pick up our son. I was home and no one asked me to do it. (laughs) I was very angry when brother-in-law dropped our son off. I confronted him about overstepping our family boundaries and we got into an argument. Okay. I told him to leave our house and leave our children alone. My wife just got home from work and we got into an argument. She doesn't like the way I talk to her brother, but I don't like the way I'm being left out of my children's life. She said we're lucky to have him help us out, but I don't want his help anymore. Hmm. Am I wrong for wanting to be in my children's life? Why aren't your children talking to you? So, I don't know how much of that you missed. Sorry. It was when they were young. They had work, hectic work schedules, so he would not only take care of them with mm. his work schedule, he would take, he would look after them for one or two days at a time. Oh, okay, now I'm getting it. Yeah, and that's why they recognize well, him so much. But even even then, that doesn't necessarily mean, if he is an ass, if he's someone who, to just get mad and yell, mm. that might be a reason why the kids are not so keen on, yeah. Yeah. Let me see if there's any comments. Hold on. Because to me, I thought it was pretty cut and dry of like. That's why they love the uncle more is because they he babysat them when they were kids. Yeah. Like, so everyone's basically like built in babysitter fucking no idea what his gift was, but we know what his gift, the her, uh, like the parents gift was to the daughter, but the uncle knew exactly what it was. 
fucking. So I guess I'm confused. I guess what do you mean? Like, what do you think? Well, I thought this guy just wasn't there for his kid when they were young. And that's why they don't want to talk to him ever? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think it takes a little more than that, usually. I Maybe there's information left out. Should I change my story? I should probably change my no, story. No, it's okay. I might change my story. Why? I don't know, because I, I, I guess I'm missing something then, because I thought it was pretty cut and dry earlier on. Well, I just think we don't... Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Okay, so when you read the story, I did miss that first part about the hectic work schedules. Uh, yeah. Um, but I still think that, like, how does he react to his children? Children give a lot of chances, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I think if it, if the reason that I never, like, went to my mom and wanted to tell her stuff about me was because I, was, I had a 50-50 chance of her screaming at me mm. or starting an argument or it would be used in an argument later versus her being like yeah okay whatever so there was no like positive reinforcement so that's what makes me think that this guy and obviously he started yelling at the fucking uncle that came in he just immediately started yelling yeah there was no conflict resolution at all he just is a yelly guy it sounds like so maybe he's just a fucking asshole yeah so that's what I was saying. Oh, okay, I get you. Yeah, I wasn't saying that he's a good guy or anything. Oh no, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, literally like basically making his brother-in-law a babysitter because like yeah, they would be sent off for a day or two at a time. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and now was wondering why his parent, his kids, not necessarily know who he is anymore, like as a father. Well, yeah, but I mean, do they not live with him every day? Uh, they do live with him every day. Yeah, but yeah. like so. I don't know. Why does he not have a bond with his kids? That is weird. It's weird. It's a, I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, what is he doing? That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> That's my first question is like, what? you need to look at your own behavior first. Okay, I get you. To yeah. recognize why your children are not coming to you first. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Okay, like, now I understand what you're saying. There are families out there that are like, okay, yes, I gotta go. Like, I, my friend Aaron, he was raised by his grandmother for a lot of his life. Mm. He does have emotional issues with his mom because of that. But he also recognizes now, as an adult, you know, why his mom was like that. He mostly calls his grandmother, but he also will call his mom. Mm. So, it's just a different relationship, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what I mean, yeah. But usually, if a kid is not going to you for some reason, when you're, like, their parent, yeah, you're doing something to make them either afraid or just which i will say yeah that's i kind of get that vibe too with the uh uh like the kid that was questioning his sexual identity yeah exactly like he what? must think that you're not going to react well Pro- yeah and like yeah like if you're the last one to know about it yeah it's very or if he thinks that even even if a kid like kids pick up on a lot more than people understand like if he thinks that you're going to be inconvenienced it might be that the uncle is like hey kid what's up and you're yeah. like all right i'll come over and that might be the difference between the kid choosing the uncle over you. you yeah, know? true. Damn, yeah. Because I don't know, yeah, if you early so, on... yeah, what were you thinking about when you read the story? I don't know, because I guess, like, the idea of, like, you know, basically, you were n- the, this parent not really being present early on in the kids' lives because of their work schedule and, like, being basically interchanged with all three of them. Yeah. Which I think is fine. I think it's okay to, like, have a, like... You have a hectic work schedule. Yeah, but I think like it's... you're not saying to not have a babysitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah. yeah. But like, I guess like, I don't know. It's weird to be jealous, I guess, of your brother-in-law for taking on. Also, only three real examples of like. If it's happening all the time, I guess. Yeah. I, I can understand. But you, you still, the first reaction should be to look at your own behavior. Yeah, not just yell at him. Yeah. Not just yell at the guy and be like, you're stealing my children. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make any damn sense. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I guess I don't know what I thought when I first read it. And that's why I'm like, should I pick another one? Because I think. Mm, I think it's fine. You think it's fine? Yeah. All right. I mean, the guy's obviously an asshole. He's mm. obviously doing something. Yeah, I feel you. Okay. Like, who in their right mind is going to be like, these kids need to learn to talk to their dad? That's, yeah, I, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. I you was know like, what I mean? Yeah. This, yeah. I feel who like, in yeah, their fucking right mind? I guess maybe what interests me about this one is maybe just the lack of information about what the dad does. Yeah. Because I feel like... The, Once like, again, uh, it's that passive voice. You yeah, know? it's a very passive voice. And, it, you know, everyone has to write the right story to make them look better. Yeah, of course. Than they are. Yeah. So I guess through the... 
uh, omission of information is the only way to make yourself look somewhat okay. But even yeah. with a little bit of information, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of info is missing about what this guy's behavior is. Because it yeah. makes him look bad. I betcha. Yeah. Like, no wonder your kids aren't talking to you, dog. Exactly, yeah. God, man. And it doesn't even have to be anything like, you know... Like I, he physically beats his kids, or even he screams no, at his but kids. It'd still be like just it could not being just there, not be not being present yeah, emotionally for sure. But I also think you're right. I think at the beginning of the kids' lives, definitely did impact the kids as seeing the the uncle as more of a father figure than the parent. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I agree with that. Yeah, damn. That's our last story, dude. That's our fucking last story, dog. That's our show. Oh my god. Sarah. Yeah. What do you want to plug? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at that's O'Hearin, T H A T S O H E E R O N. It is mostly Israel Palestine right now on there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And so. I will continue to tweet about it. So there you go. Um, <laughs> you, you can also use that handle to follow me everywhere, pretty much. Yeah. I'm Joshua Chinland on Twitter. No tweets. I don't even tweet ever. Josh doesn't even tweet. Yeah. That's all the same on Blue Sky. Don't blue sky either same i don't blue sky as much yeah but i am on there so follow me there same. uh guy nicknamed jc on twitch i stream on fridays check mm-hmm. that shit out abwsgr gaming sarah streams on tuesdays at 12, 12 p.m est mm-hmm. check that out make sure you're subscribed there and like comment subscribe on this channel on youtube raise five stars on apple and spotify podcast check out our patreon and buy me coffee at those websites for slash abwsgr check out our coffee line straight over coffee.com mm-hmm. enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your day follow ABWSGR us on, on patreon TikTok. Uh, podcast will save this on mm-hmm. Instagram Patreon has exclusive content early releases with us both Sarah Sousa and a bunch of other stuff indeed check it all out see you on the next one bye bye outro 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 <laughs> just gibberish for the outro <laughs> I guess yeah how far can we devolve the please say what I have to say can I make a point in the outro about the subtleties of podcasting without having a goddamn bunch of gibberish back <laughs> How long? I did my job. How I did you? That. Fuck. Ba.